Hello and welcome to the Reading Fall Street Fair. There are thousands of people down here with lots of different booths and we are going to have a good time today at RCTV showing you everything that we can about the Fall Street Fair. My name is Kevin Vent. I am one of your hosts today and the other host is... I'm Laura Kirk and I am your co-host today. So there are a lot of booths down here around Main Street and Haven Street and everything. How many booths do you think there are, Laura? I mean, at least over 150. There's uh, Colorusos is hosting pumpkin painting. Um, Harrow's is um, giving away um, samples of their famous chicken pot pie. And I think that the rec department is hosting a pie eating contest this afternoon. Wow, lots of different things like that. There's also concerts. There's a, 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 a car show going on. There's a place for children to uh, have bouncy houses and that kind of thing in place. So lots of things going on down here at the Reading Fall Street Fair. You know, the Reading Fall Street Fair started uh, right after they did the downtown reclamation project mm -hmm. and kind of redid that to try to bring people uh, back downtown again. And it's really something that's continued on year and year after that. It's really been a great success. And I think it's grown year after year, which is just wonderful for the town and the community and all of us here in Reading. So we're going to have a lot of guests here today at the main stage uh, for RCTV. We also are sending people around to uh, get interviews at various different booths and seeing who's here. Lots of community groups mm -hmm. are here. Uh, lots of you know, uh, charities and that kind of thing, as well as local businesses. And this is really an opportunity for you to come on down and see the various local businesses that uh, we have in town and the various uh, groups that are around that you can uh, participate with or, or get to uh, uh, um, uh, see what they're doing and what they're all about. And so it's really a way to really uh, to, to plug into your community here in Reading. Get to know Reading a little bit better. Get to know Reading a little bit better. Well, that's uh, starting off here from the street fair. We are going to be back in just one moment with uh, some interviews uh, with some people from various booths, and we are excited to be here today. You're watching the Reading Fall Street Fair coverage here on RCTV. Welcome back to the Reading Fall Street Fair here in downtown Reading. I'm Kevin Vent. I'm one of your hosts for today. And this is I'm Laura Crook. I'm your co-host for today. <laughs> all right. We're having a great time here with all the people and all the boots and everything. And we had the pleasure of being joined <laughs> by Representative Jim Dwyer. He represents the 30th Middlesex District, which includes uh, parts of Wakefield and Reading, uh, down at the uh, State House in Boston. So welcome here today. Oh, Kevin, thank you very much. It's uh, the Reading Fall Fair since it began. I haven't missed one. And I tell you, it's always a great time. I have my uh, grandchildren here today and my wife, and it's great to walk up and down and see a lot of familiar faces and smiles on their faces because <laughs> it really brings out a good community event. It's tremendous. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's your favorite part of the Reading Fair? Oh, just seeing, seeing folks that you hadn't seen maybe in a little bit and mm -hmm. all the vendors and the booths. It's good for business for downtown. And, uh, sure. you know, just, uh, I mean, when you think about community events, Reading is one of those towns uh, that just get together an awful lot, but I think yeah, after the fall and after the summer, this is a good way to come back, good segue to come back and have a community event and see a lot of folks. It's uh, just a great place to live, and and honestly, it's great for business, too. Sure, you know? absolutely. Yeah. You know, I think anything we can do to help the local business owners, uh, especially kick off the fall, that kind of thing, I think it's a good way to get this done. Well, you know, you, it, you know as well as I do, Kevin, uh, small business uh, is what fuels this country, and mm -hmm. small business is what uh, sponsors uh, Little League, uh, uh, Pop Warner football, uh, cultural events, you know, business really uh, bounds together here in uh, Reading and uh, a lot of folks, uh, 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 folks that uh, contribute a lot and uh, sure. our kids and our students get an awful lot out of it too. And the, you know, I've quoted the statistics several times but I read a report a number of years ago. It's a 80 cents of every dollar that's spent on a local business stays in the local community yeah. through salaries and wages. Exactly. And 
Exactly. Little begin Pop Warner. Exactly, exactly. So anything we can do to help support the local businesses is a really good thing. Right. Well, I know you've been working hard in uh, representing us down in Boston. Of course, we're talking about small business. What are some of the things that are coming up to maybe try to help small businesses out uh, in the coming year? Well, we hope uh, that there'll be legislation that'll be filed uh, you know, to, uh, to help small business get started, first of all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an onerous proposition when somebody wants to get into business. So hopefully, and Reading's been great at this, uh, from Peter Heckenblacker through Bob Lasha, as far as expediting the permitting business, sure. to allow business to get a, an even start and a smooth sailing into a transition. Like Zynga down the street, I mean, that was a perfect, perfect example of the community right down here at, mm -hmm. uh, when the, uh, the old Atlantic building came down, you know, yeah. now they have, they have housing down there now, uh, which is, uh, uh, Housing with the rail transportation, you get a little rake off on that naturally for your town. Sure, sure. And uh, obviously the business is downstairs, downtown from there. So hopefully we're going to be able to do a little bit better for uh, small business and get business flourishing. That's yeah. for sure. Well, the, the mixed use uh, facilities are oh, really tremendous. Cool. Downtown area like this works right. out really well. Not only providing business owners the location to have their business, but it's also providing clientele right there in the same building and uh, providing street. You know, Chicago, you know a little bit about that. I yeah. do, yes. Yeah. yeah, and lots of mixed in, uh, mixed, um, mixed, use properties in Chicago. Well, there's a perfect great. example yeah. right there. I mean, the, the folks can can uh, own that, own, own a condo right up on top, yeah. right down there. They don't have a have to have a car. Yeah. yeah. They get on the train, they go into Boston, they come back. Life is good. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's a win-win for everybody. All their shopping is right there. Exactly. Right? Yeah. All that. Exactly. Uh, so, you've been around, you've seen some of the booths, anything, any, uh, any highlights of the booths this morning? Or, or I think they're all tremendous. Uh, you know, just getting started coming up this end, we'll make our way down the other end, sure. you know. And uh, uh, I always uh, sponsor the kids' zone, so I'm always okay. glad to do that. And, Terrific. Um, the best part of me, to a certain degree, the folks I feel a little bit is uh, the folks over here at uh, EMARC. Oh, yeah. They oh, have yeah. a booth down there, folks with developmental disabilities, and I, I don't think we should ever forget the, that population of those folks. So Absolutely. It's good to see them down there. Uh, a lot of friends of mine that, that are at that booth, but just all in all, they got the football booth there. They've got Harold's chicken pies now. I'm surprised <laughs> yeah. they haven't got anything on my <laughs> on my shirt as yet. So I love Harold's chicken pies. Yes. I, I can't oh, wait to get there. Yeah. <laughs> The rumor is they were giving away some samples, too. So oh, they are. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. So, you know, if I can get two jugs of that in these hands, then life will be <laughs> good. You know. <laughs> All right. Well, we are competing with the opening day of the Patriots today also. Go Pats. So do you yeah. have a prediction for today's game? Uh, the Miami always plays them tough down there. Yeah. And there was some years that we went down as a family, my two sons-in-laws and my two daughters and my grandchildren at the beginning. We used to go down three years in a row for the Pats game down there. So... I know it's always a tough game, right. so I'm going to predict the Patriots are going to win the game by 10 points today. All right. You heard it here. Representative Jim Dwyer saying Patriots by 10. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed. Keep our fingers yeah. crossed. Good thoughts all year. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. All we have to do is stay healthy, and I think we're going to have a Super Bowl team. <laughs> all right. There we go. A right. Super Bowl championship. Right. Well, thank you very much for stopping by. I appreciate that, Enjoy Kevin. the day with your family. Thank you so much. Right, I appreciate care. that. Thanks a million. We'll appreciate be back it. in just one moment. Well, we're back here with our coverage of the Reading Fall Street Fair here uh, at our, on RCTV. We're down here on Haven Street, and we're having a great time today. One of the great things about the street fair, Laura, is that you get to sample products from various businesses and, and, uh, and people around town. And one of the businesses that has uh, warmed all of our hearts many times is, is Harrow's Chicken Pot Pies. And we have here a sample of a Harrow's Chicken Pot Pie that we can try today. Why don't you go ahead and give that a try, Laura? Tell me what you think. I'm so excited. Mm. It's now, amazing. Now that was a potato. I noticed yeah. here there's a big chunk of white chicken here too. We're going to give this a try. Oh, oh very, yes. very good. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Well, we love Harrow's Chicken Pot Pie, and we love to uh, have any other samples that anyone wants to bring us. <laughs> we are very open. <laughs> Along the way, if you have a chance, chance to check them out, they're down on Main Street in Reading, Harrow's Chicken Pot Pies. We'll be back in just a moment. Reporting here at 
here at the RCTV main stage for the Reading Fall Fair. We are here with David Darkangelo, who is running for Secretary of State. Um, nice David. to be here today. Thank yes. you for having me. Appreciate it. Good it's to see great you. Great to meet you. Good to see you. Good to see you today, David. Beautiful day out here today. We're making our rounds. We were actually just down in Melrose at their Victorian Fair as well. Okay. So mm -hmm. Perfect day for a fair. Oh, it what's really your, is. What's your favorite part of coming to the fair today? You know, I've been several times. I used to work for uh, our former state senator, Richard Tessay, Okay. and I'm friendly with Brad Jones. So I've been throughout the years I've been here. I used to work in Reading when I worked at E-Mark. So I've been here. Uh, several times, so it's always good. I want to get a chicken pot pie, but the line is like so <laughs> long. I know they are delicious. They're it is so worth good. the line. It is, <laughs> it is worth it is. the line, absolutely, yes, yes. absolutely. Well, you know, you are running for Secretary of State here in, in Massachusetts, and maybe you could give us a, a your uh, two minute or three second spiel as to why you want to be Secretary of State for the Commonwealth. Sure, thanks. Yeah, it's great to be here in Reading today, and uh, it's David Darkangelo. I'm running for Secretary of State right now. I'm a Malden City Councilor at large. I've been a Malden City Councilor at large for two terms and uh, I'm running to modernize an office and really bring transparency back to an office that's been operating in the same way for 20 years. The guy I'm running against, Bill Galvin, he's been there 20 years. So it's time for a change, time to modernize an office, and I have the skills to be able to do that. I've been an election officer for the city of Boston, so I understand how to run elections well. I've worked in the state house. I worked for our former state senator, Richard Desai, as well as serving three governors before that. Mm -hmm. So I understand government very well. But yet I'm not a creature of Beacon Hill. I've worked in the private sector. I understand what it takes to, to make business businesses thrive here in the state. And I'll tell you one thing, it's not having 40 pages worth of regulations that we have right now. Right now in Massachusetts, we rank 46th in all states in terms of competitiveness when it comes to operating businesses with fees and regulations. Right now we have 40 pages of fees that just keep increasing year after year. And that's something that the Secretary of State sets. So as your next Secretary of State, I'll look to streamline those. And the biggest thing really though, that I'm running on is transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, Massachusetts was given the grade of F when it comes to transparency in government. And don't just believe me, go to my website, daven2014.com. You can see that the National Freedom of Information Coalition gave us the grade of F. So I want to turn that F into an A. With all the talent we have here in Massachusetts, we shouldn't be getting an F in anything, let alone something as important as transparency in government. Well, that sounds good, and I uh, hope that you have a good uh, time there on Election Day, and, and we'll look forward to seeing that. Anything, uh, any favorite parts of the fair that you've seen this year? Yeah, so far we've been making our rounds up here. Like I said, I was trying to get a chicken pot pie, but I love seeing all the community groups really taking part. Sure. Uh, it's really good to see that, even when we were just over in Melrose, too. So uh, these are important parts for the community to be able to get their message out, and uh, it's nice for me and all the other candidates that are here as well to be able to meet voters and stuff. So Excellent. it's just a beautiful day. How can you not love it? I mean, if we're on live, come on down and check it out. I'm sure everybody's pretty much been here. But uh, you, a nice array of booths here from nonprofit organizations to people selling their, their wares. So. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you for uh, being on with us today, and uh, good luck on Election Day. And uh, we're going to turn it right back to thank our reporters so in the field. Take care. This is Appreciate live it. here from the Reading Fall Street Fair on RCTV. Katie here on Haven Street at the Cupcake City Van with John. Hey, John, how are you doing today? Good afternoon, Reading. Hello. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your shop and your van? Sure. We have two stores, one here in Reading at 137 Main Street, the other one loaded, located in Newton on uh, Walnut Street in Newtonville. And there's the van I take out to spread the cupcake word to street fairs like this and school functions, corporate events, and the general good times. Great. I, I know I am personally a big fan of cupcakes, as I think many people are. Yes. What's your best-selling flavor? Probably a salted caramel or a second place would be a red velvet. Mm, two very good choices. Yeah. Um, I see you have a Patriots sign here that you're giving away the, the spoiler alert. What's your uh, thoughts on the Patriots game today? As a Jets fan, I could care less who wins the game. Ooh. As a, ra as a rational person, if I was putting money on it, Patriots 27, Dolphins 14. All right. Well, we're getting started right at game time here today, so I might have to check back in with you later. We're here all day giving out the scores. We're going to lose DVRing the game tough. <laughs> if you don't want to know, don't look. If you don't want to know, don't look. That's what that's what you're getting here. But you can also get a good cupcake. So. Yes, you can. Stop by. We're here till 5 o'clock. Great. Do you have a website that you can tell me? Of course. Cupcake-city.com. Great. Thanks. Thank we'll see you later. Well, here we are back at the Reading Falls Street Fair, and we're pleased to be here today with the chairman of the Reading Falls Street Fair Committee, Steve Goldie. Welcome today, Steve. Yes, thank you. Well, it looks like it's a pretty uh, successful fair so far today. 
weather's held out for the sixth year in a row, <laughs> which we're very happy about. The turnout's been phenomenal. That looked a little sketchy last night. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have lightning, we don't have rain, we don't have wind, so I'm very happy. Yeah, excellent. Very happy. So there seems to be an awful lot of booths here today. About how many booths are there? Um, I think I. Th Approximately 167, 170 booths, which okay. is up from last year. Oh, wow, that's terrific. Yeah. And you expect a greater turnout? It seems like the turnout is really good, too. Yeah, you, you can never tell, but I think this is the biggest turnout we've had so far. Yeah. Um, we still have a couple hours left of the fair. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. So talk a little bit about the process of organizing this. I know you, know, you certainly don't start, you know, in July <laughs> to get this done. Correct. Talk a little bit, you know, let us know how it gets started. Yep, we have a, um, a street fair committee. There are um, five voting members to the committee, but we also have um, a good number of volunteers who are not voting members. So an active committee that starts meeting probably around April. Mm -hmm. We start around April. Um, we start logistics planning at that point. Also, um, John Feudo, our head of um, recreation, runs it. And we also have George Jazeri and Mike Debregard, our retired DPW. Mm -hmm. They're um, both instrumental in helping get the fair together. So we set up the logistics around April. And in May, we start reaching out to the vendors, starting to let them know and scheduling the entertainment at the different stages. Okay. So we have two stages of entertainment plus an open mic stage as well. Wow. wow. So it's, um, there's a lot of work from about 12 different people, including town staff. And, and we start meeting every other week. Then we start meeting every week in June. And, <laughs> and it's, it's a pretty daunting task. But it, truly, it gets a little easier every year because... Sure. Success breeds success, and uh, I must say true. we've done very well. Well, that kind of leads into what I was thinking about is, is do you go out and solicit for vendors, or do you find that now, because it's been successful, the vendors are really kind of coming to you? Right. This is our sixth year with the fair, and we solicited vendors the first two years. We haven't had to really since. Sure. That's uh, awesome. It kind of runs itself now yeah. in, that, in that sense. In, th in that area, and, sure. And you know what? It, when you have this many people in a community come out to see the, each other and say hello to each other and then buy goods, the word spreads quickly. Yeah. Have what do you? you oh, go ahead. Have you had a chance to walk around the fair? Um, appreciate all of your hard work. Do you have a favorite part of the fair right now? Um, well, I'm partial to the the um, classic and antique car show because I oh, organize yeah. that as well. We just gave out the trophy to a uh, a Buick convertible GS, which is a beautiful wow. car. Ooh, yeah. um, what year? It was a 19. Uh, I'm not going to quote it because I'll say it wrong. So <laughs> I apologize. It's a, a muscle car from the early 70s. All right, all right. <laughs> so um, I'm thinking 70, 71. All right, excellent. Um, it's a beautiful car, but I, I have not had a chance to fully walk the fair yet because there's always something going of on. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you see that the, uh, something like the Reading Street Fair helps out uh, the community of Reading beyond the community feel that we get today? Correct. Well, the the Reading Fair was designed six years ago to show off downtown. We had just completed the downtown. Um, project mm -hmm. and it was a way to celebrate that and invite businesses to come in town and show them what we do mm -hmm. and I think that's still important and that's what it does is it, it shows what we as a community can do economically um, and the second benefit is that we get a lot of the community comes out just to see each other sure. and I, I, I'm hearing that a lot from people today is oh well this is a great time because I get to see that one and this one and we just finished a busy summer not everybody saw each other so it's a great way to get the community to interact well, that sounds terrific. I know it's a busy day for you, and we thank, yeah. uh, thank you for taking the time to come by and, and chat with us a little bit and share about uh, everything that's going on. And thank you and the whole committee and uh, the town employees as well for putting this all together. Yes. Correct. Laura, why don't you send us into break? Um, we will be right back. main stage at the Reading Street Fair. So, Kevin, one of my favorite parts of going to the Street Fair is that some of the booths give away free stuff. I love free stuff. Love free stuff. So, one of the free stuff that we have received are these amazing bags from Reading Cooperative Bank. They are just so helpful, so useful. It opens up. There's a little pocket in the side made out of great materials. Yeah, they really seem to be high quality uh, yeah. bags, you know, with some padding in them, and, and they really seem to be very nice. So. It's great, and a local a local bank, a great bank, um, yes, rooted in 01867. Excellent. So that's uh, some of the swag that we got here, and uh, we're pretty happy about free stuff. What other kind of free stuff do we have? Um, I know that some people are giving away pens. Um, Harrow's is giving away... Um, samples of their wonderful chicken pot pies, um, pens, maybe pins, um, 
and just also information, information about these local businesses, these local um, organizations, and just more information about Reading. That sounds great. Where are we headed now? We are heading to our reporter in the field at the Colorusos booth. We're here with Joe from Calarusos on Main Street. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing today, Joe? Um, well, we're offering free pumpkin painting for uh, all the kids in town that come to the fair. Great. Have you guys been to the fair before? Uh, yes, we've been here since the first year and uh, one of the biggest attractions. And you know, we just have a great time doing it. Excellent. Do you guys have any special events coming up at Calarusos? Well, the fall is, is a special event for us at the farm stand because of all the native produce and the pumpkins and the mums that we carry. So the fall is, the whole fall season is a special event for us. Great, yeah. great. When do you guys start getting ready for Christmas? Um, the, probably like the week before Thanksgiving. We really don't like to talk too much about it. You know, <laughs> kind, of, kind of take it as it comes. But okay, the great. The week before Thanksgiving. Great. Uh, what's your favorite thing at the fair besides your colors and stand? Um, Greg over there at the butcher shop. He's nice. My, yes, yeah. he's my favorite thing. <laughs> does he? What does he do? Burgers. And burgers and dogs. Yeah. And yes. That's yes. Great. All I can eat. <laughs> That's always good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks very much. Good luck today. Okay. Well, we are here with uh, candidate for governor Charlie Baker, and he is Hello. here enjoying the Reading Street Fair today. Nice to meet you today. How are you? Great. It's nice to see you. So, what have you uh, been doing here at the fair today? Uh, mostly shaking hands and um, occasionally poaching some of the really unbelievably great food that's along the <laughs> route, which we'll be poaching all the way back. And uh, I was I have an old Mustang. I have a 1966 Ford Mustang that uh. I bought in 1980. So I was really interested in going over to the car show. And um, there are absolutely some beautiful antique automobiles over there. Mm. You can just see the, the love and the, and the care that people have given to those. And... Uh, I actually was given the opportunity to award the trophy to the winner, which was kind of cool, too. Excellent, so. excellent. I understand it was quite a vehicle that won, too. There, look, the, they're all winners. I mean, every one of those cars is immaculate. And yeah. uh, and the old Mustangs that are over there, I mean, I think mine's in pretty good shape, but they just glisten. I mean, they're mm. in gorgeous condition. And, uh, and I know that's been a part of this show and part of this fair every year. And I will say this, having been here before, I'm really impressed with the size of the crowd today. Yeah. You guys have cranked it up to a whole new level. <laughs> we were just talking with the uh, chair of the committee, and he said it's, he believes it's the largest turnout. Got to be. Yeah. Got to be. And you got an unbelievably beautiful day for sure. it. Sure. Do you have a favorite booth that you've seen thus far? Or? Um, you know, I think I'm going to hit the Cupcake City booth <laughs> pretty hard on my way out of here. Um, Everybody loves the cupcakes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I would just want to say how much I appreciate um, the opportunity to, to come out today. And, and I do want to just remind all your viewers that there's a primary on Tuesday, Absolutely. September 9th, and a general election on Absolutely. November 4th. And it's really important that they get out and vote. Yeah, well, you're running for governor. I am. And uh, this is a question I always ask of people who are running for high office. <laughs> so, so bear with me on it. Because of all the scrutiny, why would you like to be governor of Massachusetts? Uh, I served in the Weldon Salucci administrations. I was Secretary of Health and Human Services and Secretary mm -hmm. of ANF, and um, and I grew up in a house with a mom and dad. My mom's a Democrat, my dad's a Republican, but they and they used to debate the issues of the day at the table every night, and that was uh, pretty entertaining. But <laughs> but I really grew up believing that public service matters and it's important. And having spent eight years serving with Bill Weldon, Paul Salucci, I saw in real terms what a big difference it makes mm -hmm. if you have people there who um, who can get the job done, and uh, and I think I can get the job done. And I also, you know, when I'm out there talking to voters, the biggest message I hear from them is this one-party rule thing is just a bad idea. The checks and balances are good, and having mm -hmm. served in a Republican administration at a time when we had a Democratic legislature, I saw that in real terms and there is a there is a value to what I call kind of the constructive friction of that mm -hmm. and I think we frankly I think we get a better product under circumstances like that and I'd like to see us deliver for the people of Massachusetts Definitely. excellent yes. Good. Um, so obviously um, uh, campaigns and running for governor there are a lot of challenges but what is your yeah we've noticed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is your favorite part about going on the campaign trail you're looking at it okay <laughs> the best part about this stuff is the opportunity to get out there and you have this little card that says you're running for governor and you have this great chance to talk to people about what their hopes are what their dreams are what their concerns are and I've lived here all my life and I love the state and I've been involved in local government state government I was the head of Harvard Pilgrim for almost 10 years. I mean, I've, which 
has a million members, most of whom are in Massachusetts. I right. feel like I sort of knew a lot about the Commonwealth. And then I ran for governor, and I realized how much I didn't know. And, and, and frankly, how much I liked the people I met just throughout the course of, of both mm -hmm. campaigns, the 2010 one and this one. And that, that is definitely the best part by far. Well, that's terrific. We thank you for taking some time to come by the Reading Street Fair today. Happy and, to do it. And meet the people. We especially thank you for taking a minute and chatting with us here on RCTV. And I uh, wish you luck on Tuesday and thank you. luck in November as thank well. Thank you very much. All right, take care. Appreciate it. Thank Pleasure you. Thank you very much. You. Okay, take care. We will be back in just one moment here on RCTV. Well, we are here having a great time at the Reading Street Fair. Well, at least I'm having a great time. Are you having a great time? I'm having a wonderful time. We are having a great time here at the Reading Street Fair. And we've had some great guests that we've talked to. And we also have reporters out in the field. And I believe our next reporter that we're going to go uh, talk to now is someone who's at the Reading Swim Team booth. So why don't you go ahead and check it out? For those that are interested in swimming in the town of Reading, we have here at the Reading Falls Street Fair the Reading Girls Swim Team. How are you all doing today? Good. <laughs> So your season happens in the fall, uh, so you're actually in the midst of it right now. Um, talk about your upcoming season. Yeah, our first home meet's actually this Saturday at the Burbank YMCA, and we're really looking for some super fans because, I don't know, we haven't really had a good, <laughs> a good, uh, I don't know. They're not really, like, the meets aren't really known because they're always after the football games, so we'd really like to have a big fan section come and support our team. Awesome, and how does the team look this year? We look pretty good. We got some good freshmen. I think it's going to be really exciting. Awesome. And if there's any young swimmers out there, what's the best thing they can do to get involved uh, with hopes of one day being on the varsity swimming team? First of all, they need to keep up swimming, and then when the, when they get into high school, they got to find the team and they got to join. That's pretty good shit. Awesome. So just keep swimming. Hi, we're here at the RCTV main stage, and we are going to check in with one of our field reporters at Pocket Mama. Hi, this is Katie. I'm here at Pocket Mama Pottery with Barbara, the owner of a studio in the north side of Reading. Hi, Barbara. How are you doing today? Great, thank you. Great. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your shop? Sure. Um, I've been in uh, this studio space for probably five, six years. Um, it's a working studio. And I sell the pottery there, but I also teach classes. And, um, you know, it's a small working space. There are five students per class. I have three classes a week. Um, and it's a fun place just to stop in if you want to see the process and how pottery is made and uh, see it during its different stages and so forth. So, yeah, it's a fun place. And do you sell materials as well? No, I don't sell materials, just the finished product. Okay. Um, do you have a most popular item that people are really drawn to? Uh, not really. Um, I have some covered dishes, which are really fantastic for the microwave or the oven, and I sell quite a few of those. And then, you, you know, the usual mugs and bowls. Great. Is there something that people might not know about your business that you could give them a hint about? I think probably that they don't know that there's a pottery studio in Reading. <laughs> so I'm, uh, you know, way on the northern part of town, right next to Dandelion Ice Cream. Oh, okay. So it's not in the downtown segment, so a lot of people don't, you know, know that we're there. So, great. Uh, do you have a website or something that people can get more information? Yeah, it's PocketMamaPottery.com. Okay, great. Uh, what are you looking forward to most about the fair today, other than your own? <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun. I have a lot of regulars who stop by to chat, and it's really fun to catch up with everyone. And then we're usually pretty busy, so it flies. Excellent. Great. <laughs> well, thanks for taking this time to talk to us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Back to you. Well, I actually didn't know that there was a, po a pottery studio in Reading. Did uh, you, Kevin? I didn't know there was a pottery studio in and Reading either. You learn something new every day, and that is one of the best parts about the Reading Street Fair is that you get to see a different side of this hometown and um, get to learn more about your um, 
the local businesses, local organizations, all of that. And in light of that... It, it really is a great day. I mean, it, it, it really yeah. is, you know, the, the weather is perfect today. Couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah. And it really is a great opportunity for anyone to come on down and learn about what's going on in, in the town in Reading. So uh, we are going to toss this out now to Ryan Pinette, who is with the Swiss Bakers, and see what's going on down at that booth. I kind of thought that booth looked like it was the first aid booth. I thought so, but too. But it's actually the Swiss Bakers. So go ahead and take it, Ryan. We're here at the Swiss Bakers booth at the Reading Falls Street Fair. Uh, and can you tell us about the Swiss Bakers? Yeah, sure. We uh, we started it eight years ago in my family's garage. Uh, we're now at 120 employees and uh, have two locations. We're opening six more in the next two years around the Boston area. We do uh, wholesale retail um, and uh, farmers markets and things like that. So that's quite the expansion. Now, what is uh, what is the connection to Reading been like? I know the first location was in Reading. Right. So we started in our garage here in Reading, uh, and then we opened our first store five years ago in the Reading train station. Um, and then we've done farmers markets around the Reading area, is kind of how we started. Um, and, and my whole family lives in Reading, so that's the connection. Awesome. And how has the street fair been so far? Awesome. We, I think it's our fourth year, third or fourth year. And it's always a blast. It's great connecting with the customers and just talking. It's a great, great community event. That's great. Thank you. And we're back with the at the RCTV main stage, and we are going to check in with one of our roving reporters who is with the Rotary Club. Excellent. Let's hear from the Rotary Club. All right. Right next to the rideable pumpkin, we have the RMHS uh, Rotary Interactive Club Dunk Tank. Uh, this is Alex, who's been in the dunk tank. It has obviously already been dunked. How many times have you been dunked today, Alex? Too many, that's what I gotta say. Too many, okay. How long are you in here for? Uh, a couple hours at the time, usually. Okay. Um, I, what are you guys raising money for today? Uh, we're, we mostly raise money for the club so we can do uh, different things. This year we're trying to do th uh, something called the Green Box, uh, which is something that, uh, that we send overseas each year that has supply kits for people who have gone through natural tragedies like tornadoes and stuff like that. That's excellent. Um, so I guess we'll uh, hang out for a little while and see if you get dunked again. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Good luck. All right. Well, it's great to see all the good work that the Rotary Club is doing down here in Reading and lots of different uh, charitable organizations here in town. Absolutely. And uh, it's great that they have the opportunity to share what they're doing and share some of their fundraising efforts with the community here at the Reading Street Fair. Well, we're going to take a short break, and then we will be back here on RCTV. We're here at the RCTV main stage with um, Mike Lake, the Democratic candidate for Lieutenant Governor. Mike, it is so great to meet you. Great to meet you as well. Thank great you both you, for having me. Thanks for being here today. Um, have you had an opportunity to walk around the fair a little bit? I have. It's a gorgeous day. There's a cr tremendous crowd out there. It's so good to see so many friends and neighbors coming down to support the fair today. Awesome. And um, do you have a favorite booth? Well, I have to say I'm a little partial to the Reading Democratic Town Committee's <laughs> booth, <laughs> uh, but there's a se several food booths that I've hit along the way that I, I couldn't complain about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have you had a chance to have the uh, Harrow's uh, Chicken Pot Pie? No, but I heard about them, yes. the single serving ones. That's yes. where I'm headed next. Oh, yeah. It, they're phenomenal. We understand Cupcake City is quite a take today, too. So uh, Well, I'm guilty on that one <laughs> already. <Okay. laughs> so you're running for uh, lieutenant governor. I understand you have a couple of very good... Uh, endorsements in hand uh, with uh, former Governor Dukakis as well as the National Organization of Women. That's exactly right. Two endorsements I'm proud of. I, I, you know, we have endorsements from city councilors, mayors, state reps, state senators, and of course Governor Dukakis and, and organizations like the National Organization for Women. You know, it's only the second time Governor Dukakis has ever endorsed in a race like this. Uh, so it's a real historic moment. You can imagine how proud that makes me as sure, a candidate to, to have his support. And, and frankly, there's nobody in Massachusetts who's more qualified than a three-term governor governor <laughs> to say who would make the best lieutenant governor. I think that makes good sense. Definitely. Um, so why do you want to be lieutenant governor? What drew you to um, this race? It's a great question, Laura. You know, 
When I used to work under President Clinton at the White House, I saw that when government operates at full capacity, it has the ability to provide opportunities for individuals and to communities. The fact of the matter is, without a lieutenant governor today in Massachusetts, we are missing opportunities. We're missing the opportunity for the lieutenant governor to partner with local officials to resolve the challenges we're facing in our cities and towns. We're missing the opportunity for the lieutenant governor to build o relationships around the world to attract new jobs to the Commonwealth, jobs that pay a livable wage. Mm -hmm. And we're missing the opportunity to partner with nonprofit organizations right here in Massachusetts that are fighting for great causes. When I worked at United Way of Massachusetts Bay and Merrimack Valley, we partnered with the former lieutenant governor to try and end family homelessness in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. That work needs to continue, and there are more organizations that need that point of contact in the governor's office. Excellent. You addressed an issue which I was actually going to ask you about, which is we don't currently have a lieutenant governor. That's correct. Uh, but what kind of uh, maybe attributes or characteristics do you think you can bring to that office to kind of bring that office back into the into the fold for Massachusetts? Well, I'm the only candidate in this race who has represented Massachusetts in bringing jobs to the Commonwealth. I've worked with Governor Patrick and his administration to build partnerships. We, we built a partnership between Massport and the Port Authority of Lisbon, between Catalonia, Spain, and Massachusetts, recognizing that Catalonia, like Massachusetts, is investing in high-tech, clean-tech, and life sciences, the very same three industries we've been investing in here. There are so many opportunities for our researchers to collaborate, for jobs to be brought to the Commonwealth. And these are jobs that, as I said, pay a livable wage and give an individual a career path. It's not just about standing behind a cash register trying to make ends meet. Where in Massachusetts, if you earn minimum wage, you have to work four full-time jobs a week to be able to afford to live in the Commonwealth. Right. It just doesn't make doesn't sense. Doesn't make sense. All right. Well, we thank you for stopping by here uh, at the RCTV booth, and uh, thank you for coming out to the Reading Street Fair today. Hope you have a great time for the rest of the day and uh, get to meet a lot of people and have some people share some ideas with you. We're here with uh, candidate Mike Lake, who is running for lieutenant governor here in the Commonwealth, and uh, good luck on Tuesday. You're in the primary on Tuesday. That's exactly right. Please remember to vote for Michael Lake on September 9th. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again in November on that ballot as well. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All thank right. you so much. Good great luck to today. You. All right. Thank Likewise. you. We'll be back. You're watching us here on RCTV. Well, we're back here at the RCTV main stage at the Reading Fall Street Fair, bringing you coverage from all the whole street fair and all the many things that are going on. My name is Kevin Vett. This is Laura Crook. And Glad we are here. Yeah, we are your hosts. And we are here today with Tom Conroy. He is running for state treasurer. Welcome today, sir. It's great to have, uh, it's great to be on the show. It's great to be here in Reading. Yeah, thank great you. Great to for have you. Yeah, thank you for showing up for the street fair today. And uh, I know you've been walking around seeing people. Anything, any favorite part of the street fair you've seen today? Uh, well, a lot of different uh, nonprofits out there really uh, helping some of the folks who are in some tough disadvantage uh, situations, whether I think we just went to some folks with disabilities that mm -hmm. they're trying to help okay. out. Uh, others were moms that need um, home furnishings once they get out of a homeless situation, uh, that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, it's great that there are charitable organizations out there helping the needy. Um, and as a state representative, you know, government has a role in doing the same, and I've been a big fan of that, a uh, big supporter of, of those kind of services up at the State House. Awesome, awesome. So, um, why are you, what drew you to running for treasurer? Well, uh, I believe that the treasurer actually has a lot of authority to open up educational and job opportunities for people, and I, I want to accomplish that mm -hmm. as the next treasurer, hopefully over the next eight years. Um, I am guided as a state rep, and I've been guided even when I worked in the private sector by trying to address this issue of economic fairness, economic justice, opening up opportunities for people. Uh, the best thing that you can offer anybody, as I found out throughout the course of my 30 years in professional life, is a good steady job with decent wages and decent benefits. And uh, I've done that in the private sector. I've tried to focus on that in the, at, at the State House for the past eight years as a state rep. I'm the chairman of the Labor and Workforce Development Committee. Um, I actually led the charge on increasing our minimum wage, which has been a great boost to uh, families, uh, working families throughout Massachusetts. And I want to do the same kind of work, uh, helping manage our finances and lifting people up 
giving you more, more opportunities for folks as the next tre treasurer. So what do you see as the treasurer's number one responsibility? Mm. Well, actually, there's five major, and I'll try to get through them real quickly, five major responsibilities. Some of them uh, people know the, the lottery is managed by the treasurer. Mm -hmm. The Massachusetts School Building Authority, a hugely important program for cities and towns as they renovate and rebuild their schools. They come to the treasurer for money and project management assistance. Managing the $60 billion pension fund is the third major responsibility. So any state employee uh, is uh, hoping to have that uh, <laughs> pension fund be solvent and the treasurer is responsible for making that I happen. Imagine so. Yeah, <laughs> yes. that's, that's, a, that's a big piece of this. Managing the Commonwealth's checking account. Just like mm -hmm. all three of us probably have checking accounts mm -hmm. at a bank, the treasurer needs to decide where to invest those billions of dollars mm -hmm. any given day. Right. A Swiss bank account, a California mutual fund, or what I'd like to do. Local banks mm -hmm. right here in Massachusetts, they can lend more to local businesses, invest in local uh, people, and hire folks into local Main Street middle class jobs, perhaps like some of the vendors that are right here at the uh, the Reading Street Fair. All right, excellent. Yeah. Have you had a chance to sample any of the food here at the Street Fair? Not today? yet, but that's next. I'm looking <laughs> forward to Do you have any suggestions? Well, we. <laughs> Harrow's um, is giving away little um, single serving samples of their amazing pot pies. And pot then, pies. yes. Interesting. And then there's a, um, the cupcake shop yeah, is. Cupcake City. Yeah. Cupcake, cupcake City cupcake is City. a couple doors down from that. So you can have a little main and meal, a little dessert. A little dessert. <laughs> Sounds great. We'll have yeah. to check those out. <laughs> thank right. you very much. All right. Well, thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for coming on down to the street fair. This is uh, Tom Conroy. He's running for treasurer <laughs> for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Good luck, sir, on Tuesday in the primary and again in, uh, in November. Thank you very All much. Right. Again, Tom, uh, vote on Tuesday for Tom for Treasurer. That's the easiest way to remember it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we will be back shortly here on RCTV. here at RCTV, the RCTV booth with Marion Ryan. She is our current district attorney and she is running for re-election. Marion, it is so great to have you here. Thanks, it's great to be here today. Awesome, so have you had a chance to check out most of the street fair? I have, I've been walking around, talking to folks, met a lot of nice people, mm -hmm. chatted with some kids, great kids with lots of decorated faces. <laughs> oh yeah. So yes. it was fun. <laughs> Definitely. Do you have a favorite booth or, or anything that stands out for I'm you? I'm really loving the Harrow's booth. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you aren't the first person to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so you are currently our district attorney. I am. You are running for re-election. Um, what do you hope to um, accomplish in this coming um, campaign and then hopefully, you know, in your next term? Sure. A um, couple of things that really are important for our office. Are, first of all, the prosecution of cases. You know, we're responsible for all of the thirty-five mm -hmm. to 40,000 cases across the county. We do that extremely well. The second piece of it and the really piece that requires us being creative about these things is sort of looking at those cases and thinking about what could we do better? How can we educate people to protect themselves and their families? What can we be doing to prevent some of these crimes? And then when somebody does find themselves having committed an offense, maybe because of a mental health issue or a substance abuse issue um, or some other life situation, what can we be doing to hold them accountable and also let them go back into society, mm -hmm. not repeat that? Mm -hmm. So do you really see your role as one that partners with law enforcement in those issues? Partnership is just critical for us. And it isn't just law enforcement. So many of the things we deal with aren't just public safety issues, they're public mm -hmm. health issues. Mm -hmm. So I put together a lot of great partnerships with the hospitals, with the ambulance companies, with treatment providers, you know, really getting the whole community invested in these issues. Excellent. So what do you see next for the district attorney's office? Well, we're going to be continuing a lot of that work, particularly our work in the schools, our work at the senior centers, and as I mentioned, the, the hospital-based programs dealing with some of the mental health and substance abuse issues. All right. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so where are you headed next? Um, I think I'm going to Bill Ricca next. Awesome. And, yep, it's a beautiful day. There's lots of things going on, kind of making the rounds to lots sure. of places. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Well, hopefully you get a chance to try out a little more of that chicken pot pie along the way. That and the ice cream. <laughs> and <laughs> <the> ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you for being with us here today, and uh, good luck. Uh, are you in the primary election I am on in Tuesday? the primary on Tuesday, so I hope everybody gets out and votes. Gets out and, and vote on Tuesday yeah, for the primary as well, and hopefully in November again as right. well. And vote Ryan for district attorney. Ryan thank for district attorney. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you Take very care. much bye for bye. being here. You're watching RCTV's coverage of the Reading Falls Street Fair. We will be back in just one moment. Well, we 
are back here on the main stage at RCTV's coverage of the Reading Falls Street Fair. My name is Kevin Vent. This is Laura Crook, and we are privileged to have a candidate for the 6th Congressional District in Massachusetts, Richard Tessay, with us here today. Nice Thank to you. meet you here today. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. So you've uh, been walking around the street fair. Uh, anything? What's your uh, most your favorite part of the street fair today? Well, you know what? I, I'm hungry, so I'm going <laughs> to eat some of the food on the way. And I've been coming to this uh, for quite a while um, sure. when I represented the town. And it's nice to see how it's grown, mm -hmm. like a little larger every year, and you have more vendors and more organizations participating. And I think it's a really good thing to bring out the community and um, to, you know, really uh, help um, build community spirit. I understand town. you had the opportunity to uh, give the prize for the car show also along with Charlie Baker. Is that correct? Okay. No, I didn't do that. Oh, I thought, I thought no, I'd heard I, that. Okay. I would have liked to, though. That okay, I thought I'd heard that. Somebody would have been happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you are entering or um, kind of d during this campaign, I know that campaigns have a lot of challenges, but what is your favorite part about campaigning for office? I really like meeting people, mm -hmm. and um, so I got to meet 100,000 people before November. So I got to <laughs> meet a lot, but um, I like to um, really meet people and listen to people. Um, and when you listen to people, you find out that they're extraordinary people who live here in Reading and throughout the district. And you also hear some of the issues and problems that they're having. And um, you know, I've always tried to be been a problem solver when I was in the legislature and I want to bring people's concerns from here to Washington and most people you know who are watching TV and just you know reading the newspapers have a general sense that something's seriously wrong in our country mm -hmm. and the country's headed in the wrong direction and you know I, I represented Reading for 20 years in the state senate and I always tried to be um, very uh, grassroots in the sense that you know I always try to have my finger on the pulse of what people in Reading were thinking and what they wanted and try to you know try to bring that to the state house when I voted on things and try to get things done and that's what we need right now is we need some people down there who are more connected I think with their communities mm -hmm. and who who put their love of country first before their love of party. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, how, how do you anticipate trying to uh, strengthen that bond between the Congress in Washington and the people here back in, in the 6th District? Well, again, I think we should clean house down there right now <laughs> on both sides of the aisle, probably, and just bring some new people in who have a different perspective on things. And, you know, my professional life, I'm a real estate agent, and I deal with uh, very emotional buyers and sellers and <laughs> obstacles in the middle. Really? They're emotional. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. And, you know, you try to remove the obstacles and bring people sure. together, and that's what I do professionally, and that's what I did at the State House as well and I really do think that um, you know if you have people who love the country more than party and are willing to put party aside um, we have some big challenges and people have to start working together or we're going to be in a lot of trouble and I think most people sense right sure. now we're you know we're, we're sort of about to go off a cliff so that you know that's why I want to do this and I think um, you know, the, the district's huge. People in Reading know me, which is great um, from having served before, but there are 39 communities all together right. and uh, about 770,000 people. So oh. usually what I'm doing is just going around and just introducing myself and, and talking to people, you know, about my background sure. and, and what I want to do. Obviously, as you mentioned, there are a lot of different issues facing our country at this time. Mm -hmm. If you had, and I, and I know this is hard to do, but if you had to pick one or two, what do you see as priorities for Congress to be working um, on um, in this next session? What I hear the most from people, again, is jobs and the economy. Mm -hmm. And the economy isn't creating the type of jobs that you need to live, work, and raise a family here in Reading or this region the way it used to. Uh, years ago and the reason why that's happening is because there are just so many regulations and so many taxes and you know so many disincentives for people to sp mm -hmm. particularly small businesses to hire people and to you know take a risk and I, I think that um, some of those bad bills that have been passed and some of the over regulation that's taken place should be you know it needs to be balanced uh, on a pendulum and and you know to um, help people become confident again um, to, you know, to take risks, to hire people, and that's the number one thing. And then the country is $17 trillion in debt. Mm. And I saw the other day a, a statistic that said that uh, every kid who's born today um, owes $53,000 towards mm. the $17 trillion debt. And that's no way to start, you know, a life for, sure. uh, for kids. And, you know, the most interesting thing is every group I speak to, I'll always say to people in the room, you know, raise your hand if you have kids or grandkids, and everybody does. And then I'll say, well, raise your hand if you think your kids and your grandkids are going to have the same standard of living, you know, um, job opportunities, educational opportunities right. that you've had during your lifetime. 
and nobody ever raises their hand. That's interesting. And I think that's, that that's really symbolic. It's I very think, telling. Telling yes. of what's yeah. going on in the country. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, great, great points, great <laughs> thoughts. Um, do you have any, um, do you have any plans for the rest of the fair? Well, I'm here today. Um, I'm here probably for another couple of hours, mm -hmm. and then I'm heading up to North Andover, and I'm going to try to get some lunch. Uh, <laughs> why I'm here, I'm smelling everything over here, and it, oh, uh, yes. it's, it's, it's pretty good. And I just want to meet a lot of people. Um, I have a lot of, um, this is kind of nice to be in Reading because people know me, and sure. I have a lot of, um, friends that have made over the years and it's kind of nice to reconnect to people and, and it's great to see um, the studio so active and so yeah. many people here. Uh, you, it looks like you have some new equipment <laughs> and, and you're really on a good roll. Well, I was so, going to mention, I mean, you've always been a big supporter of community access television. Yes. I just didn't know if you had a word or two about why you think uh, community access television is important. It gives you such a great opportunity, um, not in a sound bite or a snippet, mm -hmm. but really for people to get to know you. And I ran a cable show every month for almost 20 years yeah, when, when I you was were a state the senator, senator I remember that. and I'd always, whatever issue was hot at the time, I would sort of sure. explain why I voted the way I did, and I'd be in the supermarket and somebody would come up to me and say, hey, I saw you on Reading, you know, public <laughs> access, <laughs> and it makes people very accountable, <laughs> and, um, you know, and it's the best, it's a really good way to reach people, well, so. My, my hope would be is uh, when you're in Congress, you can do some of that same kind of thing again. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I understand how important this is, and um, for anybody out there watching, support the uh, local um, Reading public access station, because um, you get a real wealth of, um, I guess, inclusiveness and, and sense of community out of it. Sure. So. Definitely, so. definitely. So thanks for having me. All right, well, yeah, thank you for thank visiting you. us here thank today you. at the and Street Fair. Thank very you nice for to continuing to be a friend of RCTV. Thank you. All right, very thank nice you very to much. See you too. This has been Richard Tissay. He is running for Congress in the 6th District here in Massachusetts. The primary is coming up on Tuesday and, of course, the general election in November. We're going to take this back now and uh, see what's going on out there in the field at the Reading Street Fair. We'll be back with you in just a moment. Here I am on High Street with Kristen, the owner of Sweet K in Reading. Hi, Kristen. I'm great. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Sweet K? Sure. It is a cookie business that I started um, in honor of my mom and my daughter. We all start with the letter K, and um, I make sugar cookies decorated in all sorts of fun patterns, um, frozen Ninja Turtles, anything you can imagine, I can decorate a cookie. Excellent. Uh, do you do any events or any uh, special projects? I do. Um, actually, today's a very special day because um, I've decided that all the proceeds that I make today are going to support a charity called Birthday Wishes, oh, wow. which is a charity in Massachusetts that um, provides birthday parties to homeless children. So this is a very special event. So everything I make today is going to happily go to Birthday Wishes. Wow, that's fantastic. That's really good to hear. Uh, do you have a most popular cookie shape or type? Well, I will say for right now, it's frozen. Anything with Anna and Elsa <laughs> is uh, is pretty popular. Yeah, I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> and I do also uh, gluten-free, so I have some gluten-free selections here, too, for people who have dietary Oh, that's great. Um, is this your first time at the fair? It is my second year. I had a great time last year, and I'm um, very happy to be back. Excellent. Uh, and can you tell us your website information or how people can contact you? Sure. So I have a Facebook page, um, Sweet K, and I also have a website, which is www.sweetk.net. Excellent. So uh, Sweet K is here on High Street, and uh, you can come see her and also help a great cause. So that's great to hear. Thanks very much. See you later.
Standing back behind CVS amongst a plethora of classic cars, uh, we're standing here with Chris, who's taking in today's Reading Falls Street Fair. Chris, how do you think it's going so far? I think it's so fun. It's great for the, the local businesses to really show what they have and, and really just publicize themselves, you know? Now, Chris, have you been uh, throughout the entire fair yet? Oh uh, Yeah, we, we've walked down Haven Street, up Main Street. I just think it's really great so far. And what has been your favorite part so far? Hmm. I, I like Swiss Bakers a lot always. Um, I really like the dunk tank and we had lunch at Town Pizza, so that was fun. Awesome. So you've obviously you've tried a lot of the foods that are here. What, which would you say is your favorite? Um, so far, I just had lunch, but every year I love having uh, the, like, the various pastries at Swiss Bakers. Um, there's always like, some great candy that you have. And yeah, there's two pieces of pizza for $5 special. That's really good. So. That's not a bad deal. Now, Chris, have you been any, in any of the bounce houses? I have not yet. I'm scared. Is that, that something you're going to look into? Possibly. I'm scared that I'm going to crush some people based on my size, but I'll look into it. It's probably a legitimate concern and probably a reason to stay out of there. Yeah. Well, Chris, enjoy the rest of the street fair and uh, you know, enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. Hey, you too. Thank you so much. I'm here on Haven Street with Lisa from the First Congregational Church in Reading. Hi, Lisa. How are you doing today? I'm Katie. I'm great. great. It's been a great day at the fair. It really has. Yes. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about the First Congregational Church? First Congregational Church is a member church of the United Church of Christ. Um, we're an open and affirming church, which means we're welcoming to all people, including LGBTQ people. Um, we have a great little Sunday school and a wonderful worship program and terrific uh, um, adult programs as well. And we really put some emphasis on mission and working with people in the community and working with organizations in the community like Heifer. Heifer International. All right, today, you to talk to us yeah, about Heifer International? Yeah, today we've been, uh, we've been in, in, encouraging kids to take their pictures uh, in the Heifer Cow and just raising a little bit of awareness about the Heifer International which raises money to send animals to people in need all over the world. It's an, it's an outstanding organization and we're proud to support it. We have a great fair, small heifer marketplace fair 
in the spring every year that our children from the Sunday School put on. Excellent. So it's it's our second best fair of the year at <laughs> our church. Leading right into leading right into the our October fair. big event, <laughs> which is the old Reading Fair, or as I like to say it, the old E Reading Fair. Yes. Um, which is a great event. We've been doing it for 58 years. Wow. And uh, most people in Reading know the fair and really encourage folks to come out. We've done some new things. We're still doing some old things that people love, the traditional stuff. We have great lobster rolls. And, um, I'm always up for and lobster some roll. other terrific, terrific food. So that happens the first weekend in October this year, so okay. the 3rd and 4th of October. Friday night we open at 5. Crafts, booths, food and candy of all kinds, everything you can imagine. It's a great fair. Great. So how can people find out more information about the First Congo? They can go to www.churchofreading.org. That sounds pretty easy to remember. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm Lisa. I'm the pastor. And we hope you all will come and see us for the fair or any other time. Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. Excellent. Thanks so, very much. So oh, you have another I have question. another question. So besides the Congo Church booth, oh, yes. what is the best thing at today's fall? There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that the best other thing at the street fair are the local bands playing on the on the um, dais down at the at the bottom and then up at the top. Stages, yeah. We've got kids who are in bands who get this is their first exposure to the public. We've got uh, you know longtime bands who play in the public. Uh, arena and it's just it's great to have the music yeah. at the fair. I've heard that from several people today that the yeah. music has been really I really good. love the music. Great thank you very much Lisa thank you very and much. Uh, good luck with your Heifer International Awareness Program that sounds thank great. You. Thank you. Blessings. All right bye bye. We're standing here at the North Shore Skating Club booth at the Reading Town Street Fair. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the skating club? Yes, I'm with the North Shore Skating Club, and we've been we're established in 1948 at the Lynn Arena in Lynn, Mass, and sort of traveled around over the years to different rinks, and are now based at the Burbank Ice Arena in Reading, where we've been since 1994, and are very happy there. We offer group lessons for beginners who are interested in recreational skating, competitive figure skating, and hockey, and we serve ages four through adult. We also have a great show every April where we showcase our skaters, and as I said, we, we do cater to all levels of figure skating, and we have many competitive skaters as well. That's great. Now, how, how would someone get involved with the skating club? They could go to our website, which is www.nsskating.net, and read all about it. They can call the Burbank Ice Arena at 781-942-2271, or the North Shore Skating Club at 781-944-5874, or they can email me, I'm Susie Sweezy, the skating director, at nsscjc at nsskating.org. Awesome, and and just to just to talk a little bit about the event we have going on today. Obviously, a lot of foot traffic. How has this been event? How has this event been for you all so far? It's been great. We we they located us right next to the ice cream stand. It's kind of hot, so everybody's been stopping in, and we've been giving away free little goodies, and um, everybody's enjoyed it. Awesome, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
So we're here with the folks from the Mass Department of Children and Families, and your name again was? I'm Andrea Cosgrove. And what can you tell me about your organization? So we're a state agency um, for children and the Commonwealth for child welfare, but one of our main missions today is to talk about being coming a foster parent and wanting to really get the word out um, about how you can become involved with the department and you know all the different um, steps that we have for training and the different scenarios that we have for a foster parent. You could be long term, short term, have young children, teenagers, you know, just answering any questions that people might have. What would you say is the most common question that people ask when it, beca when it comes to being a foster? Um, I think people really want to know about the training. Um, we do have a 10 week training class um, for parents or potential parents to attend. I think they also want to know um, if they can choose the age of children that they want in their homes, and you definitely can. If you want to have just toddlers, you can have just toddlers. You know, if you want even just girls, you know, because you have a, a girl in your home, you know, you can choose as well. So. Yeah. And would you like to introduce the rest of the year? Uh, sure. We have, a, we have a couple foster parents. We have uh, Jessica and Mary, and we have Debbie Turgeon, who is our supervisor in the Malden DCF office, who is also here to answer any questions that people might have. Very good. And how's, been the, how's the traffic been for your booth? Uh, we've done very well today. We were near a lot of kids' activities. Uh, we were making duct tape bracelets earlier. We ran out, um, so it was a popular activity. We have Dum Dum Lollipops, but we also have a lot of brochures just about, you know, foster parenting and, you know, again, just trying to get the word out and answer any questions that people might have. Now, what's a duct tape uh, bracelet? What is, yeah, what, um, that must be tape to take off. Is that oh, no, it was, uh, you, if you take just a shower curtain ring and you wrap the duct tape around it, it's like a bangle with any print or design you'd like. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank oh, you. thank you. at the Understanding Disabilities Jail with Karen and Laura. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Understanding Disabilities? It's a disabilities awareness program that's been in Reading for 30 years. Uh, all of the elementary school kids uh, go through programs with Understanding Disabilities. Uh, it's a privately funded uh, program that all, yeah, all the school age kids go to. And can you talk about the jail today? The Jail and Bail is our biggest fundraiser to fund the program and it's um, Basically, it's like a run or a walk where people get sponsors and organizations like the Community Singers you see here uh, get sponsors and then they come in and spend their 15-minute sentence in jail and then people come by and, and give them additional funds for understanding disabilities. And it's a lot of fun as you can see. Everyone's enjoying themselves and having fun with it. And you have to dress for the part. You do have to dress for the part <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> That's excellent. Um, do you have anything upcoming that you can talk to us about? Uh, another fundraiser we have is our, photo, um, our holiday photo. Um, and that will be coming up in the fall. We haven't got dates yet, but that will be happening soon. And how can people find out more about your in uh, organization? Yeah, understandingdisabilities.org is our website. So yeah, and we're Excellent. on Facebook too. And what are you looking forward to most at the fair other than the jail? Other than the jail. The, uh, the chili, I think, is what I'm most chili. looking that's, forward to. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. Definitely. Do you have something you're looking forward to? I'm, I'm waiting to go over to Portland Pie. I've been <laughs> staring at yeah, it. We've been looking day, at it all day. So. Yeah, you are in a, a pretty good spot for the food yeah, anyway. Yeah. We're, we're, we're smell that all day long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. You too. Hey there, sad reporter. Nobody gives a damn about the truth of freedom. Song you sing, you're a 
Words are beautiful, but they don't mean anything. Oh, you said, reporter, you're not. Well, we are back here at the RCTV main stage at the Reading Falls Street Fair. My name is Kevin Vent. This is Laura Crook, and we are joined today by Congressman John Tierney. Thank you for being here today. Happy to be here, Kevin Laura. It's a nice, nice day for us. Oh, so, it's beautiful day. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Have you enjoyed the street fair thus far? I always do. Every year. It just seems to be growing. I mean, every year I think it's probably maxed out, and then you can buy there are more tables out there and more people. So maybe just we'll doing something right. Maybe we'll have to build a few more roads down here to fit a few <laughs> more. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, it's, thank you. it's great for you to be here. Do you have a favorite part of the street fair that you've seen today? Or? You know what? I think everything is so great. The food is always good, obviously, sure. on that. But just to see some of the businesses get out here and show their wares uh, and get to have people have a little attention they might not normally see if they had to go from store to store, I think it'll be attractive to people to come back and maybe target where they want to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. People are in a good mood. Everybody's having a good time. <laughs> I did tell you, I did like the robotics though, with the, uh, the ah, high school team. I, okay, we had some good. fun over there. They that's that's one that no one has uh, mentioned yet to us. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, they, they probably haven't been there yet, but if they get a chance to go by here and go over there, the kids are working really hard. Sure. Uh, oh, absolutely, and the yeah. teacher was just saying, it's not just the uh, engineering of the robot. It's the business aspect of it, raising the money for it, putting the program together in the budget, and yep. then doing the PR, and then actually getting the thing to fire. Yeah, <laughs> great that. experience for the high school. Yeah, yeah. Yes. absolutely. Well, uh, Congressman Tierney has been our representative in Washington for 18 years, That's right. and uh, you are running for re-election. Absolutely. <laughs> Tuesday is uh, the primary. Tuesday is the Ask primary. Ask to consider the vote. I appreciate <laughs> it. Coming up. So I guess the question I would ask is, is you know, having been in Congress for that long, you know, what kind of new things do you see coming up for, for uh, happening down in Washington that you really feel that you need to be a part of to represent us? Well, one of the really good things was we, we just did pass the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, which uh, we quarterbacked through and got 95% of the Senate and the House to vote for it. Excellent. It's a way to you know give people the skills they need to get jobs that actually exist. Mm -hmm. There's no more train them up and pray, but yeah. identify where the jobs are, what the skill set is, get that ready, prepare people, and then employers get the quality that they want. They can identify and hire people on that. Now it needs to be implemented. So part of it will be going back, making sure that that gets implemented smoothly and okay. our communities can really take advantage of it. A lot of apprenticeship programs in there. So people, uh -huh. while they're getting uh, trained up for the job, can go to work in an actual company and they each get to see sure. uh, how they like that. Uh, the higher education uh, bill, we did the higher education opportunity bill a few years ago. It's up for reauthorization. There are some parts that we want to do to make it even more affordable for uh, students bring down the interest rates on loans, uh, try to make sure the Pell Grants are worth what they should be worth and people have different options, and try to help the colleges bring their prices down, or at least keep okay. them within the cost of living or lower on that part. So all of that, we've got to do some work on preschool, uh, you know, and there will be a lot of foreign policy issues obviously going back sure. as we go in. And I think my experience on the Intelligence Committee as well as chairing the uh, National Security and Foreign Policy Committee mm -hmm. uh, are helpful there. But obviously as a, as a, a higher ranking member because you've been in Congress for a period of time, right. uh, it's important to have that kind of influence. In, well, I think in it Washington. is. You know, we've, uh, the district, I think, has been served well by that, having a voice at the table. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes a while to get there, but uh, it is an institution that runs on seniority. And I'm proud. I'm, I think I'm the only member that actually uh, is a ranking member in two committees. One is the okay. Health, Employment, uh, Labor, and Pensions on the Education Committee, and the other is the National Security and Foreign Policy uh, Subcommittee on Oversight. So uh, it keeps us busy, but it's all good stuff, and it's nice to know that uh, people here have that voice at the table. Sure, absolutely. Laura? Um, so do you have any plans um, going forward in the fair? 
in the fair. Yes. Uh, you know, we're going to make another trip back through. Mm -hmm. Probably going to steal some food off somebody there. So oh, yeah. like, it looks too good. <laughs> Mike's problem is a sweet, so I'm always angling to get something to sweet on that. Right. But it all well, looks you good. should you should definitely check out um, Harrow's is giving away little sil singles, single serving. Um, uh, cups of uh, their pot pie and it's oh, it sounds right. amazing and they're right next to Cupcake City so you there can you get go, some I get sweets. Twofer. I get <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks for the scouting and the advance work on <laughs> That's that. Right. Yeah. Well I know yeah. uh, you know as a representative in Congress one of the things that you have to do is both look at issues nationally and also look at how they affect your local district. All the time. Yeah. Um, how do you how do you do that I guess is my, is my question. I, that well, sounds you know, very challenging to me. You know you do it by making sure that you get out and talk to people all the time so this is a fair we're all having a good time but it's an opportunity for me to listen to people uh, and people are good about that. They don't hesitate to come up and share their ideas. Sure. Uh, so the, you know, we do that. We go out, we visit schools and hospitals and businesses uh, regularly on that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the best thing. So that whenever we're doing something down there, it's informed by what people here see and need uh, and talk about on that. And I think that's the best way you could do it. We have town hall meetings on phones. We get mm -hmm. thousands of people to listen in on that. We have town hall meetings out in the public. Uh, I think it's mostly just being open on that. Our website, we got a, uh, the Golden Mouse Award on that. So, <laughs> you know, letting people know all the time and being sure. able to interact, I think, is, is really helpful. Uh, and I think, you know, that it pays off in the long run. We're going to disagree sometimes at the Iraq War. I voted against going into that, into mm -hmm. Iraq, and that was not popular at the time. Mm -hmm. But eventually, you know, people came around the position to say that that was the right way to go, and I think sure. it helped build some trust that they know that sometimes we have a little more information than the general public might have and right. that the right. more they get to trust their member to take that and use it to the advantage of their district. Right. It's helpful. That's a really good point, yeah. Well, I think that, you know, it's true. What's the old quote about uh, that a representative owes the people his judgment as well exactly. as, mm -hmm. as uh, you know. Well, it's real easy to take a, a test every time and take a poll or something like that, sure. but that's uh, it's not going to work. And, you know, I wish that, you know, uh, people had access to all the information, mm -hmm. uh, but it's such a crazy world out there. So many types of information coming at people. Their lives are so busy. I think that's you know why they need representatives because that's their job to focus in on that and then to make the judgment as you say. Right. right. Well, we thank you for coming down here to the Reading Street no, Fair today. Happy to do it. Thank hopefully you for having me. Hopefully you met a lot of people. Great. And we've uh, got a ton. We're going to be some more on the way back through. All right. Well, we uh, wish you good luck on Tuesday in thank the primary and again hopefully in November uh, in the general election. I appreciate that. All right. We've thank been here with uh, Congressman you. John Tierney on RCTV. We will be back in just one moment. Thank you very much. Stick around. We've got the Harbor Light Chorus coming up soon for the Teal Street Band. Stand by. My, uh, this is Laura and Kevin. We are here at the RCTV booth with um, Jason Lewis. He is running for State Senate in the 6th Middlesex Fifth. Fifth in the <laughs> fifth Middlesex district. Excuse me. Um, so, Jason, it is great to have you here. Have you had a chance to check out the fair? Um, thank you for having me. It is great to be here. Um, it's actually my first uh, fair as Reading State Senator. Awesome. Um, so it's a special one, and I'm so impressed uh, with all of the people that are out today, and all the families, and all the local businesses and nonprofits. It's um, obviously a great success. Oh, thank you so much. Do you much. have a favorite part of the fair that you've seen today? Well, it's hard to beat the uh, uh, bail, is it jail and bail, bail and jail? Oh, well, the bail, okay. jail and bail, <laughs> yeah, right, the jail and bail, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna, uh, probably when folks watch this, it'll be uh, after the fair, but uh, I'm going to be going in, in jail a, a little while. Oh, okay. So uh, if you uh, come by and uh, help bail me out. Get them out of there. Raise money for a great cause. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Understanding awesome. disabilities in our schools, so happy to support it. Definitely, Excellent. definitely. So you were elected in the special election in April, and now you're running for real election. Would you like to tell us um, about your time in the state Senate so far and how you've been preparing for re-election? Sure. Well, absolutely. As, um, as folks may know, we had a crazy series of special elections, uh, all triggered by John Kerry becoming our Secretary of State. So eventually uh, that meant Catherine Clark uh, was elected to Congress. And, uh, and then I uh, was fortunate enough to succeed Catherine as the state senator uh, for the town of Reading. So it's been about three months, and I've just been working hard to get you know all over the community and um, get to know people, get to know the organizations, the needs of the community. Um, we've had some successes already, actually, uh, working with uh, Brad Jones and Jim Dwyer, who mm -hmm. are the two state representatives. Yep. 
we were able to get uh, um, some safety improvements made on up on Main Street and the intersection with Franklin. Oh, yeah. Mm. Which yeah. has mm -hmm. a, been a very um, dangerous intersection. Mm. And that was um, just done this summer. That was just done, yes. Yeah. So uh, working with the Mass de Massachusetts Department of Transportation and the local uh, leaders and the police department, we were able to, to get that. So I'm pleased that about that. And, um, you know, we've got uh, a lot of work still to do on uh, funding for our public schools, con continuing to increase... Um, funding for transportation as well, and uh, that's uh, that's what I'm looking forward to continuing to work on. Awesome. So as you have uh, kind of felt your way through the state Senate, but now you're, of course, running for re-election for the seat you just won a couple of months yes. ago. What do you see as the most important issue that uh, is facing the Commonwealth in, in the, this time around? Well, fortunately, I think, uh, you know, I, I served in the state House of Representatives for five years as the mm -hmm. state rep for Stoneham and Winchester before becoming state senator. And the big issue for many of those years was the, the state of the economy. You mm -hmm. know, we'd had the Great Recession, lost a lot of jobs. It was very difficult for our uh, Commonwealth and for our families and businesses. Fortunately, we're now doing much better. You know, we're, our unemployment rate is, is much lower and, and better than most other parts of the country. Our state revenues have recovered. So I think we're now in a position where we can really focus on how do we what do we want to do to, t you know, to help encourage m further growth in our state and help everyone who hasn't yet realized the benefits of the recovery to share in that? Mm. Um, so continuing to create economic opportunities for all. And I'm a big proponent of supporting our public schools because I think that's what really creates opportunity for everyone. So um, those are some of the things we, we I look forward to working on uh, in the months and years ahead. Excellent. Awesome. Um, so you're running uh, kind of in a full election for the first time. That's right, because right <laughs> now I'm finishing Catherine's term. That's right. And, uh, and then in November, when we uh, vote for governor and everything else, I, I, I will be um, uh, uh, hopefully uh, re-elected as, uh, as state senator. Sure. So what, what have you uh, kind of learned this time around as running in a full election as opposed to a special election in terms of maybe your favorite part of running? Uh, well, I'm, I'm hopeful more people will turn up to vote. <laughs> 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 on April 1st, it was scary. There yeah. were so few people who voted. And, um, you know, I, I um, uh, w was born in South Africa. Um, I'm actually the only non-native-born member of the Massachusetts Senate. Oh, okay. And I, I grew up during uh, the apartheid years in the mm. 1970s. Mm. And, of course, under a par uh, uh, apartheid government in South Africa, um, most of the population d couldn't vote yeah. just based on the color of their skin. Sure. So. For me, the the right the, the the ability to vote, the right to vote, is an e is an enormous you know privilege, and it always saddens me in when we have elections when so few people vote. Yeah. And that was true on April first. It's also, unfortunately, true in a lot of local elections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In some ways, those are the most important right. when you vote for your you school committee, your board of selectmen. You and certainly have the biggest voice in those elections. Absolutely. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and and those folks you're electing to are, have probably th the biggest impact on your community. Right. So I'm glad in November we'll probably have a lot more people vote <laughs> than we did in April. And I, I really encourage everybody to please, you know, come out and vote uh, in, uh, well, we have an election on Tuesday, a primary, yes. primary <laughs> yeah. September 9th, and then November 4th is the regular election. Absolutely, absolutely. So what are your plans um, for the rest of the fair, uh, aside from being uh, jailed and then bailed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully I get bailed. Yes. <laughs> hopefully, uh, I'm well, send, us a message, send us a yeah. message if nobody bails you. Okay. Out. We'll come, yes. we'll come. And then I'm looking forward. I, I hear that the high school students have a robotics oh. exhibit. Yes. Congressman and Tierney uh, was mentioning well, that. Did he, he mention that also? Yeah. And um, I'm a big fan of... Um, uh, as we talk about education and certainly supporting, um, you know, science and engineering and, and math. Although I would call it STEAM, not STEM. <laughs> I would add arts too. Yes, oh, I okay. have heard science, that as well. Science, technology, engineering, mm -hmm. arts, Art and, and math. And math. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the uh, Reading students have been able yes. to come up with. Apparently, it's very impressive. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we've been talking with uh, Jason Lewis, who is uh, currently our state senator down in Boston and is also running for election for that same seat. Uh, and good luck uh, this thank week you. in the primary and, of course, uh, later on in November when thank that you. comes up. And uh, we appreciate you stopping by the fair and stopping by uh, with us here on the stage as well. Thank you. My pleasure. Good to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. We uh, will be back in just a moment here at the Reading Fall Street Fair on RCTV. <laughs> Well, we're back here at the Reading Street Fair, the RCTV main stage, and apparently we have a candidate for Reading dog catcher. Not Marcel. No, Marcel no. Dubois is the uh, host of Reading Tales on RCTV, which talks about all sorts of different uh, dogs and their owners in Reading and everything. And That's correct. Here That's we correct. have a great Dane with us today. That's correct. And his name is... 
Argus. 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 Yeah. Argus. So Argus for dog catcher. Yep. So tell me, Argus, what uh, qualifications do you feel you bring to this job? <laughs> okay. Excellent. All right. Very Excellent. good. Excellent. <laughs> Can you tell us more about about this beautiful beautiful dog? Um, Argus is eight years old. Um, he actually goes to daycare at Pet Companions, um, which is right on Main Street yep. in Reading. Yep. Um, he enjoys <laughs> sleeping, <laughs> going for walks. And he's a full-blooded uh, Great yes, Dane yes. and weighs... He weighs 150 pounds. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Now, do you think if he won dog catcher, he would provide... Well, he would... I would think he'd be a good candidate for... Certainly he'd be able to catch the small dogs. <laughs> 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 that's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Yes. What do you think? Is that... That makes sense. <laughs> okay. okay. So, right, so let, let me ask you. Uh, what do you feed a 150-pound dog? Um, it, he actually is kind of picky for a large dog. He really doesn't... He eats a lot, but he's yep. not as a uh, big dog ear as most of them are. But he has about four cups of food a day. Four cups. Yeah. Wow. wow. Okay. Wow. And what kind, of, what kind of food? Is there special food? Or um, he has salmon right now. <laughs> it's wow. the type of food. Okay. <laughs> he, he has high standards. <laughs> lobster will be next. Lobster, yeah. lobster will be next. <laughs> that'll be next. That'll be next. That'll be next. That's very good. Well, thank you very much for coming on. Thank this is great. You. So hopefully he gets a lot of votes on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. a lot of votes. He'll be running in the primary election on Tuesday. Probably, <laughs> probably a write-in, I would yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Argus, Argus the Great Dane, and there's <laughs> yeah. a write-in on Tuesday on the primary election. Any, any final thoughts that you want to? Okay, good. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. A little drool on the microphone there. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being here, Argus. And uh, yes. we'll be back in just a second here at the Reading Falls Street Fair. Well, we're back here at the Reading Street Fair and at the main stage of RCTV's coverage of the Reading Street Fair. We're having a great time today with all the people around and interviewing and talking with a lot of people. One of the booths that's here today is the 01867 Neighborhood Preservation uh, Group, and this is Kathy who is here to represent that group. First of all, what do you think of the street fair today? It's been fun. We lucked out with the weather that it wasn't like yesterday. <laughs> Would have been brutal if it was right. like yesterday. Not enough as it is. <laughs> so you're uh, involved in a process with uh, uh, an uh, something that's going on with a house over on Summer Street. Why don't you explain a little bit about what, what that's about? Sure. Um, there's an historic home at uh, 186 Summer Avenue. It's currently under a purchase and sale agreement. And the uh, proposed buyer is a child services, um, nonprofit child services okay. um, entity. And their current proposition, they have uh, pulled a demolition permit to um, Pull, pull down the house and build a 9,900 square foot facility with a parking lot on Summer Ave. It's a non-residential use in a residential area. Mm -hmm. And the thing, um, what's allowing that, what would potentially allow that to happen is a state law called the Dover Amendment that allows for nonprofits okay. to do that. Because that's a big question. People are saying, well, how can they do that in a residential, in a residential area? That's sure. how they yeah. can do it in a residential area. So our group formed in, uh, in reaction to that. And we're trying to find alternatives, mm -hmm. um, both for the, the buyer and the seller, although they're under a purchase and sale. Um, but in, in the event that that doesn't go through, we'd like them both to have alternatives. Sure. Criterion, the child care services uh, company, is welcome here in Reading. We just want to find them another place to be. Sure. Um, and we'd like to find the um, alternatives for the seller, too, if, mm -hmm. if that didn't work out. I know you uh, started the process with the Historical Commission a couple of weeks ago. What happened with that? Um, well, what happened with that is the house, the uh, demolition is under a six-month delay okay. under the Historical Commission spy law. Um, and so that's what's giving us time to do all this. And another thing that's in the works is we have a what's called a local historic district mm -hmm. um, commission also in Reading. And right now we have the West Street local sure. historic district. And uh, they're proposing to also create a, an historic district on Summer Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, and that would require a town meeting vote in November. Okay. So they're going through the process now. It's in the state. They'll hold a public hearing, and they'll get it before town meeting in November. And if that passes, it will take back some of that local control um, of the street. Sure. So right now the state control is, is overriding our local zoning, and we can take back that control with a historic with a, district. With a local historic district. So you're here at the fair today really just letting people know? Yeah, we have a booth down on High Street, um, down near the laundry, and we are um, having people sign petitions if they agree okay. with our cause because we're going to present those to Criterion and mm -hmm. let them know what the support is like here for, their, mm -hmm. for them not to carry through with this project. Sure. Um, and we have lawn signs down there. We can sign up for our email list. Uh, we have a, we're going to have a drawing for an iPad. Um, we're taking donations for mm -hmm. our cause. And, um, 
Yeah, we're encouraging people to uh, get with their town meeting members and encourage them to sure. support the local sure. historic district. Have you made any headway in possibly finding an alternate location for Criterion to build a, a um, center? Yeah, the ho historical, well, we're working on that and the historical commission's working on that okay. and we're working together with them to present those to, sure. um, to the... Uh, to Criterion, and uh, I believe at their meeting the other night, I was not at it, but the Historical Commission did um, release a list of alternatives and is, pre mm -hmm. is going to present them to Criterion. Okay. There are a lot of places in Reading, from what I hear. I don't want to start rattling them off because I'm not sure they were all on the list. <laughs> sure, no, that's but, fine. But, you know, things like Walgreens, yeah. which already has a parking lot, has a lot of square right. footage, probably just the amount that they're looking for. So there are things like that on the sure, list, asking sure. them to look at those. All right, terrific. Well, All thank right. you very much for talking with us here today. Thank We're here you. talking with Kathy from the uh, 01867 Neighborhood Preservation Group. We will be back here on RCTV from the Reading Street Fair main stage in just a moment. All right. I'm Laura at the RCTV main stage here with roving reporter Katie Robertson. Hi, Laura. Hi. Katie, what is the best thing that you've seen at the fair so far? Uh, I have to say that the best thing I've seen so far was down on High Street for a few minutes, and I met Kristen at the Sweet K Bakery. Ooh. I had not heard of her business before, but she does uh, sugar cookies. And today, all of her proceeds from her business that she sells is going to a charity called Birthday Wishes. Uh -huh. And they provide birthday parties for children in need in the Massachusetts area. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So it's the Sweet K Bakery? Sweet K, yes. And where's her location? She's in Reading, mm -hmm. um, and she has a Facebook page, so you can check her Facebook page uh, for more information. Uh, the cookies looked delicious. Oh, they included Mutant Ninja Turtles. <gasps> And today is Patriots game, obviously, so there were lots of footballs also. That sounds awesome. Um, have you gotten a chance to paint a pumpkin at Calarusos? No, but I went to talk to the people painting mm -hmm. pumpkins, and there were many small children of making very beautiful pumpkins uh, with all of the colors of the rainbow, and uh, very excited about it. So it looks That's like wonderful. it's going to be a great day. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're back here at the Reading Fall Street Fair main stage for RCTV, and we're having a great time today uh, vi visiting with a lot of people. We've had a lot of people come by and talk with us, and uh, this is actually one of our roving reporters. You've seen him at various places around the fair today as we've been uh, investigating what's going on. How you doing, Ryan? I'm doing very well. It's a lovely day out here, lots of great people that are in the area, so it's been great so far. So tell us a couple things you've seen. Well, I spent a good amount of time back at the car show out back behind mm -hmm. CVS. There are a lot of uh, nice old cars in, in that area, and a lot of people very proud of those as well. I would imagine so. <laughs> Talked to the, the uh, Northeast School of Ballet. Uh, okay. was another organization that I stopped in with. Very interesting things up there. Uh, the Swiss Bakers, always oh, with the, yeah, we, we yeah, love the, the Swiss good, Bakers. The good material there with the Swiss <laughs> Bakers. So, yeah, it's a lot of really great spots. Uh, Talked to the Knights of Columbus. Talked to a few other organizations. You know, everyone's just having a really great time today. It's great to see. Excellent. Great to see people out. People excited about the town of Reading. Um, you know, a couple of the politicians have been rolling around with mm -hmm. the primary coming up. Uh, a great booth that I stopped at was um, Crystals for a Cause. Okay. Um, it was just an organization run by a young woman named Rachel Moralda uh, that makes jewelry, and all the money that is uh, raised from that goes to charitable donations. Okay. So it's uh, a lot of really good organizations like that sure. as well that are coming up. So it's been excellent. Great. Excellent. Uh, what does it look like to you for turnout? You've been out and around. I mean, it's it's packed. It's, there's a lot of people that are in here. Uh, it's been a really really well attended uh, sure. event. I think you know we're trying to as we're trying to film, people are trying to make their way around us for right. the filming. So <laughs> it's been it's been really great to see a lot of those people out, and I think there's a lot of good interaction happening between the the, the vendors that are here and the different organizations, and also the the town people. So it's, it's packed. I think it's and we're we're early in the day. It's, it's yeah, just it's a, by my time. It's only about two two o'clock. So still got a few hours to go here. We do. So I think it's a you know all around great event for the town of Reading. Now, have you had a chance to sample any of the food? You know what? Not yet. Not yet. I've been I've been busy talking to talking to folks, but I think I, I've eyed a few different places <laughs> where I'm going to go and and take a couple samples of the food to make sure that I can uh, get have a full stomach by the end of the day. Well, well. absolutely, because you can't come down to the street fair and not have a full stomach at the end. That's right. This has been Ryan Panette. He's been out and about, and you've seen some of his interviews on our coverage today. My name is Kevin Vent, and we will be back in just one moment here on RCTV.
Well, we are here at the Reading Falls Street Fair, and we've been having a great time today talking with all sorts of different people. And, uh, Definitely. Marcel Dubois has stopped by. He yes, is the uh, president of the board of directors of Reading Community Television, RCTV. Correct. He's also a host of a TV show, Reading Tales. Uh, I believe we interviewed a dog earlier today. Yep. That was interesting. He's a candidate for dog catcher. That's candidate correct. for dog yes. catcher. And a good candidate at that. Of <laughs> yes. Course. That's right. He's a very sizable candidate. Absolutely. Yeah. So as, as, as someone who uh, is a president of a nonprofit organization in Reading, what kind of benefit do you see from participation in the, uh, in the, in the street fair? Well, I think what it does is it, it uh, I, I think part of the issue we face is uh, some of the residents don't even realize there is such a great studio uh, on Main Street. I think we had that problem uh, when we were on Ash Street, and now with on Main Street, I think people, it just blends in with the, with the they're not even sure there's a studio back there. Right. And I think this is a way of, because you know, everybody asks, where are you located? Where are you located? So this builds exposure for letting people know that it's their studio as well. I mean, we're all... Volunteering, we're all live in town and so on, and so uh, it, it's it's important to to let people know that it's here for the community, it's here for you, right? You know, as producers or you know potential producers and members and so on. I think especially where uh, you know people don't realize that they can actually participate in making a show or Absolutely. something like that, and you know they see RCTV studios and they don't realize it's for them. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. And that that's sort of why I got involved with my own production is uh, being on the board is great and rewarding and so on, but. Um, to, to I find with my show is you know you're amongst the community you're right in an event like this where yeah. uh, meeting meeting people it's in, uh, you know making their dogs famous and so on is great <laughs> but but I think it's also it's it's they see their own dog on their own channel and so on and it's, right. it's just it's just rewarding and I find it funny um, because it is a show about dogs and if you're a dog person um, people won't always talk about this it's a very very easy <laughs> show to do you know uh, my problem is it's it's uh, I may if it's too popular I'm spending every waking hour doing it, which mm -hmm. is not a problem. It's just that it's uh, as the show grows, and we're in our fourth season now, so it's uh, it's it can be challenging with scheduling, but um, it's, a, it's such a fun show to do, and uh, mm -hmm. looking forward to another many more seasons coming up. For sure. Right. So, do you have a dog? I do. We have a Sheltie. Oh. Um. Uh, Otis. Actually, Otis is uh, is sort of the uh, uh, sort of the, the name, the, the face of Burning Tales. Uh, we adopted him. Uh, a few years ago, he's a uh, now 12-year-old Sheltie, mm -hmm. uh, and actually uh, Otis is blind. Believe it or not, really? yeah, he okay. suffers from PRA, which is a progressive genetic uh, disorder with the eyes, and mm -hmm. uh, we knew that when we adopted him. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I guess dogs, uh, the eyesight is their third sense, so mm -hmm. they use uh, hearing and, and their and uh, smell, smell. Yeah. and and sort of the eyes can deceive you, so they leave the eyes for the third sense, you know, but. Um, He's a wonderful dog. He's getting old, but, you know, he's hanging in there. Awesome, you know, so. awesome. And it's, I think that it's wonderful that, um, you know, adopting a, you know, a special needs animal because um, those animals sometimes spend a long time in shelters and they don't find a forever Absolutely. home. So I think Absolutely. it's wonderful that you guys were able to give him that home. A Absolutely. Yeah. And with uh, over 85% of the dogs that have been on my show are, are folks, uh, dogs that have been adopted mm -hmm. through different uh, foster mm -hmm. agencies and so on. And. Um, and I think that's great. It, it sends a, a nice message. Um, Absolutely. And we give equal time to, uh, when someone calls me or emails me with the dog, it's never about, well, I'm sorry, I'm looking for a specific breed. Exactly. It's, yeah. not, like, yeah. it's <laughs> not like that at all. So you had a chance to walk around the street fair today, and did I you did. have a favorite uh, booth or? Um, besides RCTV. If you besides RCTV. RCTV. <laughs> well, we did yeah. spend a lot of, being the, being uh, Reading Tales, we did spend a lot of time down uh, at the corner of um, uh, Shoot Street with um, everything but the dog and um, the Bark and Roll had a little exhibit and a little uh, competition down there. So, uh, yeah, that was where I spent most of my time. And then walking up and down Main Street, you know. Sure. Of course, I'm looking for folks with four legs, so it's, you know, That's right, I'm right. always looking, looking down. As looking to. for potential, uh, potential uh, That's correct. people potential to be on the guests, show. Yes. Well, thanks uh, a lot for dropping by, Marcel. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, take a short break here, and we'll be right back with our coverage of the Reading Falls Street Fair here on RCTV. Okay, well, thank you. Now, Laura, this has been a fun day so far, and we've had uh, reporters all out all over the town fair today looking at different things, and right now we're going to take a look at what was going on with the concert with the Reading Symphony Orchestra.
If you're in the town of Reading and you're looking for a symphony, you might be surprised to find out that we actually have the Reading Symphony Orchestra that is entering its 82nd season. I'm standing here with Richard Perry, a member of the Board of Directors for the Reading Symphony Orchestra. And uh, Richard, if you could just talk a little bit about this, the symphony and uh, its place in the town and what's coming up. Well, it's, it's, it's a full-size, it's a 50-piece symphony and it's mostly classical music. Once a year we do a Pops concert in the spring. And that's a good concert for the entire family because it's it's music that even the kids will understand. As I say, we've been here 82 years. We perform at the Reading High School because they have a beautiful performing arts center, which is another thing people in the town don't realize unless they've got kids that go to the high school. And the other thing that's interesting, having done this job for a number of years, a large number of people that will walk by me today don't even know that Reading has a symphony and they've lived in town for 10, 15, 20 years. So we keep trying to promote it and hopefully this year will be a, a bigger year because we're introducing, as I said, a new conductor at the November concert. And I have no idea of the name of it. It's been kept a complete secret. That's great. And what is the date for that concert in November? November 23rd. And there'll be information out to the public and hopefully in the papers and on RCTV as to the details. but. At the moment, it's November 23rd at the Reading Memorial High School, 3.30 in the afternoon. So the timing of the concerts is always good because you can go to church, have your Sunday dinner, come out, get home, and still have time to rest and get the kids ready for school the next day. That's great. So make sure you check out in the 82nd season, the Reading Symphony Orchestra. Well, it was great to hear from the Reading Symphony Orchestra, and great job, Ryan, with uh, that interview. I think it's really cool that a town the size of Reading actually has a symphony orchestra one for so long it's it's really impressive and it's kind of cool if you go out to one of those concerts I mean they're, they're really good I mean you know especially if you're a fan of, of classical music but even if you're not a quote-unquote fan of classical music it's still a fun a fun evening you know Definitely. when they put on their performances and so we'll be looking forward to that performance that they mentioned uh, coming up in November yes and now we are going to check in with the Northeast School of Ballet we're here at the Reading Falls Street Fair and if you're into ballet the Northeast School of Ballet might be the place for you. Ladies, can you tell me a little bit about the school? Well, basically, it's just like a sanctuary for all kids to come, and it's really fun, and we do lots of, like, dances, and it's just really fun. <laughs> and where is the school located? 32 Lowell Street. And if someone wanted to get involved with the school, how would they do that? They could just, like, stop in and sign up, and they could take ballet classes, and it's really fun. And we also have nutcrackers, and we it's really fun to, like, into the costumes and into the role and like play a character and what is your I'm gonna ask each of you what's your favorite part about being in the school um, my favorite part about being in the school is the family aspect because everyone's sort of like a family I guess and uh, there's no like competition or hard feelings it's just really supportive I love all the teachers at Northeast School of Ally because they're so nice and welcoming and they just love to teach you I would have to say the quality of the teaching and the training is pristine. Um, I would have to say I like how we're all really close. Um, we're all really good friends now since we do ballet together. Yeah. Awesome. Well, there you have it. If, you're, if you want to get involved in ballet, the Northeast School of Ballet is a place to go. Thank you, ladies. Well, I think that it's wonderful that we also have a ballet school here in town. I think that ballet is just a wonderful um, pursuit for for young people to learn. Yeah, and it's kind of cool that they were able to repurpose the old uh, Christian Science Church up there on uh, on Salem Street. Absolutely. Uh, to be able to put that in and get that done, it's kind of neat to have that there. Definitely. Well, we're headed out now to our reporter who's talking to the people at their booth from Reading Cares. Hi, we're here at the Reading Falls Street Fair at the Reading Cares booth with Betsy. Uh, and Betsy, why don't you tell us a little bit about Reading Cares? Great. Reading Cares is an organization that supports volunteerism in Reading. We match people who would like to volunteer with agencies or organizations that need help. Um, today we're uh, pushing two concepts. One is the food pantry um, was very severely hit over the summer with the situation at Market Basket, and so we're trying to help them replenish their treasury so that they can continue to provide wonderful services to the community. We also are providing um, ideas for volunteer community service for teenagers because most of the high school kids have to put in a certain number of hours. So we'd encourage everybody to come down and visit us at the street fair or visit our um, Facebook page or our website at readingcares.org and you'll see different suggestions and ideas for community service. 
Great. And how long has Redding Cares uh, been in existence? We've been in existence in about six years now. Um, we tend to work kind of behind the scenes because we're working with other agencies or organizations like Mission of Deeds, the Food Pantry, Health and Human Services at Town Hall. Okay. And what is your favorite part about being here today for the Reading Fall Street Fair? I think my favorite part is just the enthusiasm that people bring. They love to hear about the community, they love to see what's going on, and they want to know how they can participate. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you, Ryan, and thank you for uh, talking with the people down there at Reading Cares. And I got to tell you, you know, uh, it's great to have an organization that's kind of coordinating some volunteering in town and all that. Uh, the weather today has been terrific, hasn't it? It really has. I'm so glad that the uh, rain and the winds yesterday have just um, avoided today at all and given us a gorgeous day for the Reading Street Fair. And, of course, my least favorite thing, the humidity, oh, <laughs> which yes. we had yesterday, but not here today at all. It's a beautiful day out here at the Reading Street Fair. Yes, and now we are going to go check in with Katie at Mission of Deeds. I'm here on Haven Street with Art from the Mission of Deeds. Hi, Art. How are you doing today? I'm terrific. How are you? I'm great. Okay. Uh, what are you doing here? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what the Mission of Deeds does? Well, Mission of Deeds, what we do is we help less fortunate families by providing furniture and goods and services to help them start a new life. That's great. excellent. And uh, what's going on here today at your booth? Well, what we're doing is we're educating people as they walk up to our booth as to what we do. Um, people are asking us if they can volunteer or if they have furniture that they can donate. And we, we're educating them as to the procedures that are necessary uh, to get a donation for their furniture. And we have a raffle, and the raffle is for Red Sox tickets, and um, we have another raffle for a conglomerate of uh, uh, restaurants that have donated things to us as well. Excellent. Do you have any special events coming up at all? Uh, in two weeks from today, we have our Tony Triglione walk uh, that is being done around Lake Quanta Powers. And how can people find out more information about the Mission of Deeds? Well, people are welcome to call us at 978 I'm sorry, 781-944-9797, or they can visit our facility at 6 Shapen Avenue right over here in Reading. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, do you have a favorite thing at the fair today besides your booth? Tons of good food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot also. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. All right, we are back here at the main stage for RCTV at the Reading Fall Street Fair, and we are privileged to have Monica Medeiros with us, who is a candidate for State Senate here in the 5th Middlesex District. That is correct. Excellent. And uh, so welcome here, Monica. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here today. Great. It's great to have you. Yes, great thank you. And, and you're enjoying the uh, Reading Street Fair today? Yeah, we sure got a beautiful day, that's for sure. So wonderful, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, have you had a chance to look around at a lot of the booths, or are you, you know, what are you doing here today? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I've been, been uh, walking up and down. I've been out. We have been handing out balloons, uh, having a great day. It's so nice to see so many businesses out here getting to showcase themselves, mm -hmm. so many community groups, so many people, residents. You know, I think it's it's really a beautiful day. It brings community together. Absolutely. Um, so what are you um, looking most forward to do the um, entering this Senate race? <laughs> Well, uh, you may know I, I ran in a special election mm -hmm. in April, on April 1st, and, uh, I, you know, I hadn't been planning to do that. I'm on the Board of Aldermen in Melrose um, in my fourth term there, previously on the school committee there, and I was pretty, you know, I was pretty happy and content doing things there, and as, you know, Catherine Clark won the congressional seat and uh, this seat opened up, I kept getting encouraged, why don't you run for this? And I don't know how many people I said, no, no, but, you know, I... After a while, I was like, geez, nobody's stepping up to do this. I need to do this. And, um, you know, I got into it. And, uh, you know, I think there's a kind of a, a clear difference between uh, myself and, and my opponent. Um, and, you know, we came, we went through this in April. Um, I came really close. I won here in Reading. Yep. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for their vote. Thank you very much. And I hope you'll consider voting for me again this November. Uh, and. I came really close overall with 47% of the mm -hmm. vote. So, you know, the kinds of things that we set out to do to, you know, really help families and help people, uh, all those goals are still there. And, Definitely. you know, 
I, I really want to, to do my best to go up to the State House, bring a fresh perspective, and, uh, and see what I can do. Sure, sure. As you uh, seek to go to the State House in Boston uh, after the election in November, what do you kind of see as the most important issue facing uh, this district and the Commonwealth in general? Yeah, well, I mean, we have to keep we have to keep a good eye on our budget. I mean, there's so many things that we want to do, and we know we can't do all of them. But but uh, you know, I'm a I'm a local elected official. I've been very involved at the local level in in my community. Um, we've worked really hard, and I think we've done a good job of keeping within our budget and managing the city well, and still managing to grow the city. And I want to see us do more of that up at the state house, and and I know you know again as a local official, I see how important it is for us to have local aid. That's you know our, our tax dollars that go up to to Beacon Hill via our income tax, our sales tax, and so on. And it's you know really important to get those back to the community where we can make the decisions to send them. And the the things that we do in the local level, like our schools and our you know public safety, police, fire, our roads. They're really so crucially important, and I think sometimes they get, it kind of gets, uh, it doesn't get the attention that it needs mm -hmm. and deserves. So, you know, really fighting strongly for, for more local aid is, is really my top priority. Absolutely. Absolutely. So have you had a uh, favorite booth here at the, at the fair today? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard one. I just, uh, I, I can't wait to go back and have a cannoli. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So. That's definitely. next up on my agenda. Next up on your agenda <laughs> is to go uh, get a cannoli. Yes, you All heard right. it here first. All right, well, thank you very much for being with, with us here today, Monica, and uh, we wish you good luck uh, on Tuesday, of course, in the primary, and then again yes. in November. Yes, absolutely. I really appreciate being here, and uh, and I should just say, if anybody wants to find out a little bit more about me, mm -hmm. they can visit my website, which is www.votemonica.com. Uh, I'm also up on Facebook at uh, you know facebook.com/votemonica. So uh, I welcome hearing from you, and uh, of course, like us, right? <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you so much for um, coming and taking the time to chat with us. Thank yes, you very thank much. You thank coming. you for doing this. Yeah, thank yeah. you for coming on out to the street fair as well. Thank you. We've um, been talking with Monica Medeiros, who is running for state senate here in the fifth Middlesex district, and we're going to toss it out now to our roving reporter Ryan Panette with the Knights of Columbus. You've probably seen the Knights of Columbus around town. We're standing here with Richard, who's a member of the Knights of Columbus. We're going to talk a little bit about what the organization all is about. So Richard, can you tell me uh, about the Knights of Columbus, how long you've been in town, uh, what you all do? Uh, I've been in Reading for 43 years. Long-time resident, member of the Knights for two years. Uh, I, own the, I hold the office of Chancellor right now in the local council. Council is 1031. We're a religious sovereign organization, but we focus on charity fellowship amongst our members, okay, fraternity, you know, groups of uh, working together. And we uh, host a lot of uh, athletic events, uh, soccer kick, uh, basketball uh, game, uh, basketball uh, throw, and, uh, and some baseball, okay. We actually, uh, we actually support a baseball team in the Spring Reading League. So we do a, a great deal of activities in, in town. Our collections for charities go to the Reading Food Pantry. Uh, and other charitable uh, organizations within, within the town, okay? We have a Tootsie Roll drive in the fall, and we also have a Tootsie Roll collection in the spring. Again, the money that's collected at that point uh, are for local charities, okay? Uh, any other questions? Yeah, so how would someone become involved with the Knights of Columbus? You can join the Knights of Columbus by coming to our, 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 um, our meeting. We meet every other Tuesday night at the council headquarters on Sanborn Street, uh, seven, 8 o'clock is a meeting night. Uh, you can you can um, come in, talk to our members, fill in an application, and uh, continue the process of that way. Okay. Awesome. And Richard, how is it? How has today been so far with the street fair? It's a lovely day. How has it been over here at the booth? Very, very good. The Reading street, street Fair, for some reason, always gets excellent weather, and this is just a typical, a typical example. Because yesterday we know really really hot and hot, humid, and uh, it rained pretty heavy in the afternoon, but here is a gorgeous day, and uh, we're we're pleased to be out here supporting the town and just being part of the event. Awesome, thank you very much. Well, thank you, Ryan, for checking in with the Knights of Columbus. We are back, Kevin and Delora, at the RCTV main booth. Yeah, it's always nice to hear about uh, things like the Knights of Columbus who are doing such great work in our community. Absolutely. And hopefully they get a lot of exposure here while they're at the uh, Reading Street Fair as well, and it really helps people understand exactly what it is they're doing and, and uh, the, you know, the, the things, ways they raise money and, and that and kind of thing. ways for um, people like you and me to get involved in our community is by, um, you know, learning more about these organizations and then um, offering our time. Absolutely. 
Well, I think we're headed next out to uh, our roving reporter out in the field. It's been fun to kind of kick it back and forth there it today. It has, yeah. Um, and I think they're talking to the Human uh, Relations Advisory Committee, and so we're going to kick it out to them now. We're here at the Reading Falls Street Fair with the Human Relations Advisory Committee uh, and a couple of peer leaders from the, remind me again? A World of Difference. A World of Difference. Um, and we're going to talk to Joe here for a second. Joe, just tell me uh, about uh, this organization and, and what you all do. Well, we're the Peer Leaders Group, and we like to spread awareness about uniting as a community. And we have various seminars where we meet with other Peer Leaders Groups of different high schools, and we like to learn what they're doing. So basically, our main goal is just to prevent any racial profiling or bullying within teens. And, and talk to me a little bit about some of these trainings that you all have. Well, we have two training sessions where basically we do activities that the Anti-Defamation League does. So then we just try to get everyone to be trained in the skill of not being a bystander and standing up for people who may be in trouble or may be the receiving end of bullying. So we just try to step into that. It's a pretty, pretty noble cause. And can you talk to me a little bit about um, how someone can get involved with this? Well, you can apply once you begin junior year and you will be accepted out of one of the 30 students that gets in. And that's pretty much the process. If you get in, then you start going to the meetings. So it's pretty simple. Anyone can apply once you begin junior year. Great. And we have these students here making a world of difference. All right. We are back here at the main stage at the uh, RCTV coverage of the Reading Fall Street Fair. We've been having a lot of fun today talking with various people and going out to the booths and seeing what's going on out there. And we have with us Reading Selectman Kevin Sexton. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Busy day. Uh, it is a busy day. It's actually a great day, though, for Reading. Absolutely. Um, I've, been, I've been walking up and down the streets here, and uh, it... If this isn't a record turnout, I, I, I'd like to know what the record was, because this, this is a heck of a turnout. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the weather may have something to do with that. I think so. I, um, um, I think, you know, thank goodness it's today and not yesterday. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> so I know, uh, um, you know, obviously the street fair is a big thing to help uh, focus on nonprofit groups and doing uh, good work in Reading, but it's also a good day for some of the local businesses to share what they have yep. going on. Maybe you could share a couple of highlights that you've seen today. Yeah, I, I think it's a great day um, for the businesses, and, and I think just about almost every business in town is out here and represented, and, and some from out of town certainly have come in as well. Um, some of the fun things that you see is, you know, some of the, the the um, karate centers that we have here in town have bringing kids off the streets, cracking them board uh, for them. You know, it, it, it's hilarious with their, to watch with their forehead or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I think that's been a, a really good part of it. Some of our uh, organizations that we have uh, have set up their booths and, and are promoting. Um, themselves, friends of the library. I saw down there, and they had the whole display out of everything uh, that's going on with that project. So it's it's really, in general, it's been a, I think a good day for all everyone involved. You know, not just the businesses, but the community as a whole as well. Sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And definitely a day where everyone can be proud to be from Reading and to live in Reading and just to be proud of um, this wonderful town and everything that has been accomplished. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So if you had to pick uh, two or three favorites, what would you do? Um, I, won't, I, won't, I won't hold you to just one. Uh, <laughs> too, too difficult. Two, two or three favorites, huh? Um, I can't pick them all. Uh, well, no, I, no, I, can't, I can't pick them I, I will go with the... Uh, uh, the Reading Falls Street Fair Committee then will be one of my <laughs> will, will be my top favorite. Excellent. Uh, actually, uh, no, not not to uh, I'll get off topic, but they they do a heck of a job. Sure, uh, absolutely. They, they put in a ton of hours, um, all you know, volunteer hours, um, and, uh, to put this on, and, and they deserve you know a lot of credit for this. This has been a success that they they built up. Um, not slowly. They, you know, it, this hasn't been going on too long, and they've already yeah. built it up into into the success that you've been seeing today. So, um, uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna play the the, the middle <laughs> line. I'm gonna pick them as my favorite. <laughs> well, their hard work is absolutely appreciated, and you can definitely see the results of the hard work um, behind us, and um, all up and down Haven Street, up and down Main Street. It's just um, phenomenal, and it um, it's definitely appreciated. So as we kind of uh, move forward here, uh, you know, you are on the Board of Selectmen here, and so um, as we're talking about the Reading Street Fair, we're also talking about issues in Reading. Um, how do you see the Street Fair helping Reading in terms of issues that are coming up in the next year? Um, well, just from a promotion standpoint, you know, I, I bet there's a lot of these, um, uh, the issues that are going to be coming up, probably not a lot of people actually know about them, or at least have a lot of detail about them. 
Um, so this is a great event where they where, where everybody can come out and kind of put that in the forefront and say, you know, this is what's going on. This is what's going to be facing us coming up. Um, so the just the promotional part of it alone is huge. I mean, the exposure mm. that you're getting. There's, you know, I, I was talking to um, the chief of police earlier. You know, his estimates are going to be somewhere around 10,000 folks walking wow. through these streets today. Now, yeah. not all at once, but, but sure. still, you know, um, some come and some go. And, and, and that's what kind of their estimates were going to be based on. And, and that's, I mean, that kind of exposure to anything that's going sure. on around, you know, town, community, or, or the surrounding areas mm -hmm. is, is really a, a great thing to get out in front of folks. It's so. got to be a big boon for the local business owners in particular. Yeah, yeah. I, I think th this is one of those great things for the businesses where they can really put their foot forward and say, hey, this is what we have. You know, I, I know a lot of them are out there offering sample size, um, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, cups of this or that. Uh, and and those, that goes a long way. People love to take those samples. And, and that's where you win new customers right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, show them what you're about. You know, let, let, let them have a taste, yeah. so to speak. I think it's also the kind of event where if a business is considering coming to Reading, we can say, you know, that we have this thing in the fall. And it's a great way to promote your your business as you're coming into town and all that. People will see you and get to know you and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a great point, Kevin. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. We've been sitting here talking with uh, Kevin Sexton, member of the uh, Reading Board of Selectmen here at the Reading Fall Street Fair and RCTV's coverage of that. We're going to head on out now to uh, Ryan Panette, who is talking with the people from Crystals for Care. I'm standing here at the Crystals for a Cause booth with my good friend Rachel Moralda. Um, and Rachel's been doing this for quite a while. Um, and if you can tell us just how you got uh, the start in this and, and how this whole thing came to be. Sure. I, um, I got sick in 2006 and we didn't really know what it was. Um, I ended up going through a bunch of tests and found out that I had a brain tumor. And it was super scary, but you know, I went into the surgery and... I was really sick after, and I was like, you know what, I need to do something. I can't just stay sitting on the couch and do nothing. So I decided that I'd dabble with some jewelry. And um, I just made some really basic things and found some fun out of it. And I didn't really know, you know, what it would make out of it. But then I started, you know, selling it to friends and family. And little did I know it would turn out into this huge business and that's really doing well. And so you've taken that from, from that origin to this now. Um, and I see on the sign here it says you raised $10,000 for Ch Children's Hospital. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, I hit my $10,000 goal in 2010, and I was so excited. And I was partnering with Generation Cures out of Children's Hospital. And I did a bunch of stuff with them to, um, you know, kind of promote this and promote them as well. And um, I made the donation to my brain surgeon at the Women in Medicine event of Children's Hospital. And I was the patient speaker, so I donated then, and um, the money goes to um, brain, tu brain, tumor re brain tumor research. That's great. And so an event like this is really giving you a good exposure to the community. I know there's already, already a big kind of following for this, um, but how does an event like this help you out and help the cause? This is a huge event. It's huge with the community. It attracts a lot of people. So for me, there are people that come by that know me and are coming here ex for me. And then there are some people who walk by and, you know, they catch that, their eye on the jewelry and you know there's a bond that uh, starts and people know me and know what I do so and I mean this is huge and I'm really hoping that this event will get me over my next ten thousand dollar goal. Well, we're hoping for that too. Thank you very much Rachel. Okay, we're back here at the uh, Reading Fall Street Fair and RCTV's coverage of that in the main stage. My name is Kevin Fent. I'm here with Laura Crook and we're pleased to have Bob McCarthy with us uh, this afternoon. He is Reading's representative to the school committee of the Northeast Vocational Technical High School, which you may not even be aware that Reading has any involvement in that, except that some of our students do go over there. Sure, that's a, it's a uh, 12 town, city and town uh, district. It goes all the way from Chelsea, Revere, Mall and Norrell, Stoneham, Wakefield, Saugus, um, Reading, North Reading, Woburn, Winchester. There's 12, there's 12, 12, 12 different communities. And each, each community has an elective representative mm -hmm. to the school committee. And, and, and I'm Reading's representative. You're Reading's representative right. to the school committee. Approximately how many Reading <coughs> students do you think go over there? And about 28. About 28, yeah. okay. Uh, we, every town has a quota, um, and our quota is, is 32. We have about 28 students. Okay. That's okay. over a four-year cycle. Over a four-year sure, cycle, sure. sure. So, um, you know, uh, what, what kind of work do you do on the school committee there? Well, we clearly, like any school committee on the state law, we have um, jurisdiction over the superintendent, the budgetary matters and policy matters. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that every year there's an assessment that comes out to, to each city and town. It's based on the formula, the Chapter 70 formula um, by the state. 
and we make sure that uh, Redding, I protect Reading's assessment, make mm -hmm. sure that the programs. We do a lot of um, community work here too. A perfect example is I've been on the. I first got elected in 1998, and um, we did you know the community resource. Uh, desk at the uh, police station. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Chief Silver came to me way back and said that, that the only thing that was lacking in the foyer was nowhere to, for people. So we had the school build that at no cost okay. to the city and town. Stuff like that. So Excellent. Um, and the students do that. That's right. Yeah. right, right. And, um, you know, we, we also make sure that, you know, we comply with state law around policy matters. Um, anything that comes up relative to, uh, you know, attendance laws, truancy issues, um, you know, MCAS versus uh, PAC and mm -hmm. stuff like that. We, you know, we have to accept or reject all those things. Sure, sure. So in a lot of ways, it's just like any other town's school committee, except you're focused on the one school and there's one representative from Correct. all these different towns. Correct. Yeah, and I've I've done a lot to try to um, heighten the awareness of the school and the community. Um, back many years ago, I don't know how many five or six years ago, we built flower, flower boxes for all the, the, the community uh, okay. business out on, right. on in the square here. Sure. Stuff like that. Um, you know, we, we did some other work around some of the schools. Um, so, you know, we, we have a new thing that I'm going to be going to the Board of Selectmen on the 23rd of this month. It's uh, a lot of you have labor. And it's uh, any member community can comp apply. And if your name is drawn, you're going to get up to $10,000 free labor. Wow. For municipal vehicles and the automotive technology program as well mm -hmm. as the repair and finishing collision and repair um, so if you know someone needs some trucks uh, or sure. cars li um, you know relabeled or, or uh -huh. signage or you know dents or maybe there's a there's something that needs we won't do a big fire engine but we'll do like you know, <laughs> you know dpw uh, right. or some police vehicles or whatever sure. So. sure and that actually leads into um for anyone who may not be aware that reading does have this relationship with this um technical school um would you like to talk a little bit more about that and the um, areas of study that the students can pursue yes well it's it, it obviously there's an a b week so there's an academic week as well as a, a vocational week mm -hmm. the first year the freshmen do what's known as an exploratory uh, program they go through all the different shops and the shops range from carpentry construction plumbing electrical automotive technology you know uh, fixing cars uh, collision repair uh, health dental um, office technologies uh, we just started a stem academy oh, science technology yeah. engineering and math um, you know for, it's like a pre engineer we have computer rated design um, we also have um, culinary all those, you know, it's, it's all online at notthesemetrotech.com. Um, we have a lot of different, and the students go around each, they sample each shop as a freshman, and at the, end, the third quarter of their freshman year, they pick the shop that they want, and then they, they go and they, they go until 10, 11, and 12. And they, they, um, they usually, we, we try to have them uh, graduate with a, with a certificate of occupational proficiency. Okay. And, Does uh, that mean they can go into the trade at that yeah, point or be correct. apprenticed to that trade correct, or something correct. like that? Yeah. Right. And some of the kids can go on to college. Too. Sure, absolutely. So if you're in a computer aided design or electrical, you could go into a, you know, want to go get a, a, a some kind of a degree in electrical engineering or, or sure. whatever. So I think I've heard of students uh, uh, doing the nursing program correct. also who absolutely. then go on to school. Right. For we nursing. have a health occupations program. Health occupations, yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. So it's a good school for a lot of kids. And, I mean, this being a skill-based economy, mm -hmm. you have to be able to, really have a, a skill set. So <laughs> it's, it's able a, to do something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good opportunity for, for uh, kids to, to, you know, it's an alternative. Mm -hmm. All right. Absolutely. So. Well, thank you very much, Bob, for okay. uh, joining us. This is Bob McCarthy. He is Reading's representative to the School Committee of Northeast Technical High School over in Wakefield. Correct. All right, Laura? Yes, and we are about to hand it off to Ryan with uh, local restaurant institution, Christopher's. It's been a Reading staple for years. Christopher's Restaurant in downtown Reading has been serving the community for quite a while now. Uh, and we're here with the owner, Bill, uh, to talk a little bit about Christopher's. So, uh, Bill, why don't you tell us a little bit about the history of Christopher's uh, and the restaurant itself? Well, we've been in town for almost 30 years now. Um, we do breakfast and lunch. Um, you know, pretty well established, a lot of regular customers. Um, so, it's good. And how is this, how is this event for, for Christopher's, the Reading Falls Street Fair? Obviously, we have a beautiful day here. And, and uh, you know, talk to us about what you have here at your booth. And um, We've got some pastries. We've got some chili and some clam chowder, which is pretty popular in the restaurant. So, um, But it's a good day for the, for the town, more for the town than for an individual business. But it's good for the town to get exposure and, you know, gives a chance for local businesses to show off what they can do. So. And... and 
What would you say is the best menu item at Christopher's? Oh, well, I don't know if I can pick just one. <laughs> um, famous for our breakfast, obviously, uh, omelets and a lot of different variations on French toast, bananas fosters, French toast, you know, caramel pecan, Oreo cookie pancakes. Uh, but yeah, pretty much breakfast, but we do well as li good lunch also. Well, it's been a staple for you, and I know it's been filling people's tummies for quite a while. So, Bill, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ryan, for uh, that interesting interview with a Reading Restaurant Institution. Yes, yes. <laughs> Christopher's. A beloved restaurant. A beloved restaurant, especially uh, for breakfast in the morning. It's oh, a terrific absolutely, place to go. absolutely. Uh, if you can't get into the Bagel World line, that's the place to go. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, well, we've had a lot of people we've talked with today, haven't we? We have. I mean, we were um, trying to count out the number of um, political candidates that we've talked to, and we lost count around 10. We did so. lose, yeah, yeah. We've had uh, uh, some candidates for governor and lieutenant governor and a treasurer uh, for Congress. Senate, for Congress, um, a couple candidates for Congress, and, and it's been really great. Actually, I think we had three candidates for Congress. I, I believe. believe so, yeah. So yeah. it's really been quite a day uh, for us here at the main stage of the Reading Street Fair. And I really think it, it, one of the great things about the Reading Street Fair beyond all the organizations that get some, some exposure is that the candidates come and people can actually meet them. Exactly, and get to know them, get to know what they stand for um, in a way that's a lot more personal than a website or a political um, commercial or or just seeing them give their speeches. And, it's and there was something about thought. saying, you know, I voted for that guy and I went up and I shook his hand. Or exactly. I, I talked to that woman when she was running and mm -hmm. I, you know, I feel like I know her a little bit. And so the Reading Street Fair is great for that. So it's great that the candidates are uh, are willing to come along and, and do that. And of course, willing to talk to us. Exactly. <laughs> because we're so <laughs> exciting to talk to. Hey, speak for yourself. Oh, okay. okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm exciting to talk to. Not so much, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, uh, we know our roving reporter, Ryan, roving reporter uh, Ryan has been out there all over the place this afternoon, uh, and uh, he has uh, had the opportunity to talk with the booth that has the Reading Health Department. So we're going to go out to Ryan now and see what the Reading Health Department has to tell us today. Here in the town of Reading, we have the Reading Health Department uh, that does a multitude of different uh, initiatives within the town and to make sure that we're keeping our people healthy. We're here with Ruth, and Ruth, can you tell me a little bit about what you have going on here today at the town fair? Sure. Um, we're here at the Reading Street Fair in front of Town Hall, and we're doing two initiatives this afternoon. One is education about ticks, and we have um, a volunteer who's staffing the table for the afternoon. We have information about tick tubes, how to buy them, how to make them yourselves, tick cards that you can put in your wallet that show you how big a tick is and what they look like, as well as information about repellents. So we have... Um, all this tick information that we want to get out to the public. And then we also are giving out flu shots, the first flu shots of the season here. Um, they're free with your health insurance card, so come on down, get your flu shot, get it over with. You don't have to worry about it for the rest of the year. And um, we will be putting our schedule, which we just made, um, on our website, at the town website, and by calling um, our flu hotline at 781 nine seven nine four zero oh two seven and we update that all during the year but today until five o'clock come down and get a flu shot we've got two nurses uh, registered nurses here giving flu shots awesome and how, and how is this event working your favorite to kind of get the word out about uh, the health department well we like to get the word out early and often about the health department and then the services that we have to offer whether um, it is, you know, we do inspect all the restaurants in town or you're a tenant and you're having an issue with your housing, we can come out and do housing inspections. We do blood pressure clinics. Uh, we do a wide range of things, but today it's all about flu and ticks. Awesome. And Ruth, what is your favorite part about the street fair? Talking with everybody and seeing people from year to year over time. Awesome. Thank you very much. Flu and ticks are very important um, issues to focus on, and it's actually really fascinating to uh, talk with the health department and hear what is important to them and what is important to our community health-wise. Yeah, I think sometimes we forget about some of those services that the town offers. Absolutely. You know, uh, there's lots of things that the town does that go even beyond some of the real important things like education and, and police and fire. Mm -hmm. We're all aware of those. Uh, but some of these other departments that people aren't even aware exist sometimes, and so it's good that they get some exposure here at the Reading Street Fair. Definitely. Well, uh, we're continuing to do our uh, on-the-spot coverage here of the Reading 
Fall Street Fair on RCTV. My name is Kevin Vent. This is Laura Crook. Laura Crook, and we've been having a good time going back and forth and talking with a lot of people and seeing a lot of things. And one of the things that the Street Fair kind of gives some opportunity for is for even for some of our, our schools to show some of the good work that they're doing. Absolutely, absolutely. And we are um, in that vein. We are going to toss it over to Ryan, and he's with the High School Robotics uh, team to uh, see what they're up to. All right, great. If you're into robotics and at Reading Memorial High School, you should check out the RMHS robotics team. I'm joined here by Chirag, who's going to talk a little bit about it. Yep, so we're a brand new team, or relatively new. We started up in the 2012-2013 year, high school year. Um, we're a team made of high school students. What we do is we build a robot in six weeks. Um, we're into teaching kids about engineering, working with tools, working um, with each other, you know, teamwork stuff. We even do business stuff too, you know, branding ourselves, coming to events like this, you know, showing off the robots to kids, stuff like that. It's pretty cool. And does the does the team go to competitions for for these builds? Yep. So what we do is we build a robot for a game. The game they release at the beginning of each year, and from that six weeks we get to build a robot. And after that, there are competitions held in local areas in Massachusetts, Connecticut, for our region. There's also competitions all around the world too, all around the country. Um, yeah, we compete in these competitions. So how would someone get involved with this club? Well, I mean, if you go to the high school, even if you don't go to the high school, you can contact us on robockets.org. That's our website. Um, we get, we'll get have an announcement on the high school um, PA system. You know, we'll have a meeting. We'll let you know when to come. And it's really open to anybody. You know, you don't have to be strict on, like, the time schedule. You can come whenever you want when you have the time. It's really open to that. Great. And how has the Reading Fall Street Fair been for you all so far? It's been awesome. I mean, you know, we've been talking to a lot of little kids, you know, getting them interested, some parents. We might even have some new mentors coming, which is awesome. It's always a good thing. So, yeah, it's great talking to the community about this. We love this. We love this kind of stuff. Okay, we're back here at the uh, Reading Fall Street Fair, the main stage of RCTV's coverage of the Reading Fall Street Fair. We've been having a lot of fun. We've talked to a lot of people today. Definitely. Uh, my name is Kevin Vent. This is Laura Crook. And we have with us today Seth Moulton, who is a candidate for Congress in the 6th District. And you have a primary coming up this week and then uh, maybe the general election coming up in November. So thank That's you right. for taking a few minutes and, and talking with well, us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Absolutely. So have you enjoyed the street fair this far? Oh, the street fair has been amazing. Yeah, yeah there's an incredible number of folks out here. Great booths, great people and pretty good weather too. Yes, we are very grateful that the <laughs> rain um, rained out yesterday and then, you know, gave us beautiful weather today. Um, so as you approach the primary and then um, hopefully the general election in the fall, um, what is, we know that candidates, or um, that uh, political races can have a lot of challenges, but um, sure. what is your favorite part of running for office? It's the people that I meet mm -hmm. and every single day. And, and the people I meet in the district, they're, they're eager for some change. Mm -hmm. You know, Washington is broken, and fundamentally, we can't fix Washington mm -hmm. if we keep sending the same people back again and again. And to get out there and meet folks who are excited about creating some change, to bring jobs back to the district, to ensure educational opportunity for all, to finally take care of our veterans, and to make sure that women get paid the same as men. Those are things that people care about, and they want new leadership to get it done. Absolutely. So as you look at uh, kind of the needs of this district, and you also have to have a, an eye on national concern right. as well when, when you're in Congress, what do you see as kind of the most pressing issue? You know, uh, the number one issue is, is, is jobs. Uh, despite the, the recovery in the economy, uh, if you look at unemployment in the district, it's gone over 107 uh, percent mm. since Congressman Tierney took office. 107 mm -hmm. percent rise in unemployment. So that, that's, that's not good. The 6th district has higher unemployment than the rest of the state. We can do better. We need economic development. I think we need a congressman who understands economic development. And you know, if you want a good example of what can be done, look at what Congressman Paul Songus did for the city of Lowell. Mm -hmm. Turn that city around. That's the kind of leadership we need here in the 6th. So do you have any specific thoughts on that, on that issue? Uh, yes, kind of actually we have an economic development plan for okay. Lynn that we're in the uh, process of releasing. Okay. And I think that in, you know, it was in Gloucester last night. We need to get the fishermen back to fishing. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of things that need to be done. Some of them are very specific to certain towns. Um, others are, are more broad, education and job training, mm -hmm. connecting businesses with the new Essex Aggie uh, Technical yep. School. Yeah. That will not only help the, the, the uh, students who become workers, it will help bring businesses to the district. So if you do that right, public-private partnerships, you can get a lot done. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Um, so, have you had a chance to check out the much of the street fair? 
Yes, I've been all the way down and all the way back. Nice. So met hundreds of voters, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody's excited about Tuesday. Everybody's yeah. watching the race. Yeah. You know, we just had a new poll came out uh, come out that uh, that showed me up by two. So That's the last awesome. poll said uh, basically dead heat, but mm -hmm. uh, but down by three, now up by two. So everything's going in the right direction. Momentum is definitely on our side. And the other thing I think it's important for Democrats to mm -hmm. know is that the poll showed that uh, I'm eight points over Richard to say in the general election, whereas Congressman Tierney is eight points behind Richard to say. Mm -hmm. So if Democrats want to elect someone who can hold the seat and ensure that this stays Democratic, then they need to choose me in the primary on Tuesday. And Absolutely. I'd be honored to have their support. <laughs> well, that sounds like a, a ringing endorsement there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know you've gotten a couple of big endorsements. I know the Boston Globe has endorsed you for the seat. And, and uh, so uh, we uh, wish you all the best of luck in the uh, primary. Yeah, no, thank you very much. I, look, Tuesday. I've been honored by the, the endorsements. Actually, we've received seven newspaper endorsements. Okay. Uh, to Congressman Tierney hasn't received any yet. Um, but uh, it shows that I think there's, there's a real desire for change out there. And I would be honored to help bring that to the 6th District of Massachusetts. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for coming to the uh, Reading Street Fair today. And uh, thank you for joining us here on RCTV and giving the voters a chance to get to know you a little bit. And, uh, and uh, we just, again, wish you luck in the primary and hopefully again in November. Thanks so much. All, All right. right. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank we you. are headed out now to uh, Ryan Panette, who is out and about and continuing to look at all sorts of different places here in Reading. Why don't we take it out and send it out to Ryan now? One thing that Reading is known for is, is its education, and we're here at the Reading Education Foundation booth. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, foundation? Uh, sure, I'm happy to. Uh, we're the Reading Education Foundation, and we raise money basically through two major fundraisers. One is upcoming the first weekend in December at Parker Middle School. It's our annual not-to-be-missed Festival of Trees, where it's a family-friendly event. We have tons of events for kids, and also we're looking for people to donate fully decorated trees. Our second fundraiser is in the spring. We do uh, an auction and a gala event called the Imagination Celebration. Last year we raised over $50,000 that went directly into the Reading Schools. The way that works is teachers, administrators, and staff members write grants at their local school level for things that are innovative and creative and really go outside what the regular school budget can support. Um, last year we were really proud to uh, pay for a lot of great grants in the school district and I know the robotics club is right here next to us and uh, we were very proud to give them some startup money to start the robotics program and also give them another grant this year to continue to fund uh, their equipment and their competing prices but we also have um, lots of other grants including lots of technology although we are formally the Reading Technology Education Foundation we don't just fund technology we fund everything from musical instruments to speakers to professional development really that if teachers and administrators can dream it we want to fund it that's great now how can someone in the community get involved uh, it's very easy. We have a website. It's www.reddingef, E as in education, F as in foundation, dot org. They can go on our website, sign up to, to be on our mailing list. If we have a couple of board um, positions available, if, if folks are looking to be part of the board. Also, every one of our events, we need super volunteers to help. But our biggest thing is if the Reading folks can come out for our two major events, that's the best way to support us. Come to the uh, Tree Festival. Festival. The first weekend in December, it'll be all day Saturday and all day Sunday, December 6th and 7th at Parker Middle School. And the Imagination Celebration is a live uh, auction online in um, May, and then our event will be the first weekend in May, and we'll have details uh, to follow on that. Fantastic. And and about the, the Reading Fall Street Fair here, how has this been for you all at this booth? Oh, we love the street fair. I, my husband and I are lifelong Reading folks. We grew up in this town. We're raising our kids, two high school graduates, often graduate school and college, and one at Parker Middle School. We just love the town. And this is just one more reason to love Reading. So, thank Awesome. You. Thank you very much. Well, I think that everyone can agree that education is extremely important. It is something that um, all of the candidates that we have been talking to have made a point of um, addressing this. So I think it's great to learn more about the Reading Educational Foundation and how we as Reading natives can um, 
can help out and contribute. Yeah, and they, and they do a great job raising a lot of money for, for it. They used, used to be just for technology in the school, mm -hmm. but then they've kind of broadened out and have raised money for all sorts of different projects in the school. And if you haven't had the chance to go out to the Festival of Trees, uh, which is one of their big fundraisers, that's a really fun event. You can go and take a look at all the trees. You can bid on the different Christmas trees to purchase and all that. And it's, it's really a fun event um, that the Reading Education Foundation sponsors every year. Well, another thing that's been going on in town is the expansion of our library. Absolutely, uh, um, and I'm so excited about that. I love the library. Laura's a library person and a book person. Loved it since I was a child. I'm a book person, too, and she's been going to the library since she was uh, about as tall as my ankle. And, <laughs> and so anyway, the library is doing an expansion project now, and uh, they have a booth here at the fair talking about some of where they're at in the process mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing. And uh, Katie was out there talking with them. So why don't we send it out to Katie and uh, find out what's going on with the library expansion project. Hi, this is Katie here on Haven Street with Cherry from the library building committee and we're here to talk about the upcoming move and renovation which is very exciting. Uh, Cherry can you tell us about what next steps are for the library building? Uh, the library is going to uh, eventually sometime this fall we'll be uh, moving into temporary quarters. Uh, the move will take probably the, between two and three weeks. Uh, we're not exactly sure of the precise dates but um, it probably will take about that long. Uh, it'll be about uh, a third to a quarter of the space that the library currently has. Okay. So uh, will the books be in off-site storage or what will the service be like while you're there? Some of the books will be in off-site storage. We'll have some of the more popular books and the ones that are typically uh, used most often we'll, we'll have at the new site, the temporary site. Okay, great. Um, we're going to try to be continuing all of the services that we currently offer. They just will not be offered at that location. Uh, they'll be located at other places um, around the, around town and other uh, town-owned buildings primarily. Okay, great. And can you tell us what some of the next steps are in the terms of the project timeline? Uh, well, one of the major next steps is to uh, have everything ready to go out to bid, which should be happening soon. Uh, the bids will be coming in, and once the bids are in and they've been looked at, um, there'll be... Uh, the contract contractors have all been pre-qualified, so once we get the uh, the low the lowest bid and, or the winning bid, however that works out, sure. um, the contractor should theoretically at least be pretty much uh, ready to go. They already have indicated their interest in in uh, bidding on the project, and we've already approved those contractors that uh, that that have applied. Or, or you know, so everything should be uh, should be ready to. To roll fairly quickly after the bids are, are the winning bids are selected. Okay, great. So, and, uh, what is it that you're doing here today? Uh, we're just here informing people about the move and letting them know that they'll still be able to do virtually everything that they can do now uh, at the library. So uh, we just want them to be informed. We have some drawings in the back here of the interior uh, of some of the rooms in the in the new building. We have uh, exterior views here, so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite part of the fair other than your library booth? Oh, good. My favorite what? Part of the fair other than the library Oh, I haven't seen any of it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been here, so. Well, I hope you get to walk around a little bit. I will later, thank you. Yeah, yeah. thanks very much. It was okay. great to meet you. Thank you. you too. Back to you, Laura. Bye. Well, thank you, Katie, for that um, wonderful look at the library expansion project. And if you have an opportunity, definitely um, go check that out, see their drawings. And I'm just so excited to hear all about this expansion project. Like I said before, the library is very close to my heart, and so I, um, I always love talking about that. Yeah, and, and uh, not only do they have the booth here at the uh, Reading Street Fair today, but I know they have a lot of that information available in the library itself. So of course. if people are looking to find out more about that project and can't get down to here today, they can always go to the library um, on uh, Middlesex Ave and, and check that out uh, and see what's going on with the library project. We are continuing to move along with all sorts of stuff happening here today. We've talked to a lot of candidates, and uh, we've had a beautiful day, and uh, we've been watching the Patriots game on the monitor right over yep. there, <laughs> um, which was kind of depressing yeah. and uh, <laughs> but anyway we are headed out to uh, talk to the Reading Butcher Shop if you remember when uh, the Atlantic supermarket closed a few years ago uh, many of the people who were involved in the meat department there decided that they wanted to stay in business and so Absolutely. they opened a butcher shop right here in the center of Reading and Katie had the opportunity to talk with them at their booth so let's head on out to Katie and find out uh, what's new at the Reading Butcher Shop this is Katie I'm here on Haven Street with Greg from the old butcher shop uh, he's going to talk to us about uh, what's going on at the Butcher Shop today. Well, today, this is our road show day. <laughs> Been doing it six straight years now. Great. Absolutely love it. Great crowd. Uh, men, women, children, and everything in between. <laughs> 
Have you been getting a lot of turnaround today? It's, it's just wonderful. Uh, we try to change the menu up every single year. Uh, this year we did breaded chicken tenders. We did hot dogs, which is always a mainstay. And we also did meatballs. Oh, excellent. Meat, meatballs and chicken tenders we actually sold out of, which is not unusual. <laughs> um, but we, we try and keep ourselves well stocked. But uh, yeah, you know, sometimes. Big turnout today. Sometimes supply doesn't meet demand. <laughs> Do you have anything special going on in the butcher shop uh, in, for upcoming events or anything that you're doing recently? Well, we, we always uh, do a lot of nonprofit things with Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, Reading football team. Uh, they're always in here on the weekends um, trying to drum up business from the locals. Yeah. Um, so we, we try to help whenever we can. It's a transitional period for us because we go from a summer menu into a fall winter menu now where we're concentrating on more prepared foods. Uh, we hope to have an oven in the store over the next several weeks, uh, which will really, in celebration of our fifth anniversary this October, um, will really uh, feel like we've turned the corner with this business, and we're very, very happy about it. That's really great to hear. Uh, what's your most popular item that you sell in uh, your I, shop? Boy, I, I can't label it towards one particular thing. Um, one week it could be meatballs, the next week it could be a chicken cordon bleu. Um, uh, breaded chicken has always been a favorite year-round and like we always do, everything is in small portions. It's done fresh daily and that part of it never changes. I'm a big fan of your Reuben, I have to say myself, I think you do a really great Reuben. Do you have a favorite sandwich that you guys prepare? Uh, the meatball parm as well as the chicken breast parm are huge but we also do a, uh, a hitching post uh, hence the initials HP which is a hot pastrami sandwich tying and, it in yep <laughs> and we just big big calling for those so that's great thanks very much oh, my uh, pleasure. appreciate your time yeah I uh, hope, hope you have a great rest of your day thanks so much thanks for stopping by thank I personally love that Reading has a butcher shop I feel like it gives it that sort of old world um, old world feel just a little classier and definitely the idea of having um, fresh meats you know natural food is just wonderful to have that option yeah and it's great to have it does give that kind of that old town old town feeling um, for uh, for Reading and that's pretty cool mm -hmm. you know besides uh, going to a lot of booths and seeing a lot of businesses and organizations and that kind of thing. There's also a lot of activities to do down here at Definitely. the street fair during the day. We talked a little earlier in our coverage about the, the pumpkin. Yes, Colorusso's pumpkin Colorusso's painting. Colorusso's pumpkin painting and um, and all of that going on. And there's also, you know, I know there's blow up games uh, up on the common for the, for the kids to play around on and, and jump around. I think Congress, uh, excuse me, Representative Dwyer mentioned something about that uh, yes. earlier in the day. And the other thing that they have going on, I know, is, is, is even just uh, fun stuff like face painting and, and this Balloons, we've seen balloons are all over the place. And I believe we let, had the opportunity to go uh, and take a look at the face painting. And so Katie uh, is going to be talking to some kids that had their face painted. So let's go take a look at that. This is Katie here at the Kids Center in Reading Cooperative Bank parking lot. I'm here with three lovely ladies that just got their faces painted. Can you tell me your name? Katie, Mia, Hannah. Hannah. Nice to meet you all. What did you guys get on your face painted today? I got an ice cream. What's your favorite kind of ice cream? Uh, Swiss Jacks. Good choice. And it matches your shirt, too. Very nice. What did you get on your face today, Mia? I got a cat. And is that your favorite animal? Um, no, I just picked that. Kind of what, what, do you have a favorite animal? Yeah, my favorite animal is a dog. Oh, well, we have a lot of dogs here today, right? Have you seen a lot of dogs today? Yeah. And what did you get today, Hannah? Um, doggy paws. I like them. They look pretty good. And it matches your shirt, too. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. <laughs> you guys are good. Uh, what grade are you in? I am in fourth. How's school going so far? Good. Good. And you, what grade are you in? I'm in third. And how's school going? Awesome. Awesome. What's your favorite thing about it? Um, let's see. Science. Science. That's excellent. I like science, too. And what about you, Hannah? Um, Fourth grade. Fourth grade. And what's your favorite thing? Um, in like a subject? Probably lunch. Sure. Somewhere. Lunch. <laughs> I like to eat too. Speaking of eating, have you guys had any snacks today? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I, got cotton, I got cotton candy and what else? 
chicken pot pie. <laughs> Good, yeah. <laughs> What's the last one? Oh, yeah, had candy. And candy? Same for all of you, or what did you get I something had, different? Um, she had saved everything. Every, all everything? Yeah, she had saved this thing. <laughs> did you get um, something else? Yeah, I got pizza, frozen yogurt, and chicken pot pie. And Katie was actually had her eyes on the doggy pretzel. Oh, are you going to try to get it? <laughs> no, I, wasn't, I didn't have my eyes on the doggy pretzel. Yeah, like, oh, that looks ice cream. <laughs> well, it would match your face and your shirt. So that should probably be where you go next, huh? My mom's saying that. Yeah, well, you've had a lot already, right? Yeah. Are you guys doing something special after this? Where are you guys going next? Have you guys done everything in this area? Or you no. Go? Well, we went. No. They were at the mechanical um, pumping. Oh, yeah, I saw that. And then, like, we get, we're going to do, like, we someone to do it one more ticket, so. All right. Well, good luck, girls. Have a great rest of your day, and thanks a lot. Okay, well, we are back here at RCTV's main stage covering the Reading Falls Street Fair, and we have with us today Steve Grossman, who is running for the governor of the Commonwealth. Welcome today, Steve. I'm thrilled to be here. I was over at a dinner, the annual dinner of the Reading Democratic Committee on Friday night, and uh -huh. I heard about this, and I, I've been here before, but not for a couple of years, and I said, I've got to be here, and I've got the most beautiful day of the year so far, <laughs> so it's a... It's, uh, it's a wonderful experience. I'm seeing a lot of old friends and seeing a lot of new friends, and it's been a wonderful day. Excellent. Yes. Well, thank you so much for stopping by thank you. to talk with us. Um, do you have a uh, favorite booth at the fair that you've seen? Well, I actually was interested. I was down at the Hitching Post, which mm -hmm. I just moved and had its grand mm -hmm. opening uh, just yesterday. Just, just yesterday, yeah. And it's a beautiful store and a number of other places. I, I've been sort of eating my way through Massachusetts today. I started <laughs> oh off yeah. at the dedication of a new Hindu temple okay. in Sharon this morning, and they gave me a lot of Indian pastries. And then, of course, I went over to the Victorian Fair in Melrose, and they right. gave me a bag of kettle corn about this big. <laughs> but before I leave Reading, I promise you I will be taking some delicacies with me in the car because i got to keep my colleagues in the car <laughs> well fed. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're glad you've uh, been able to come to the street fair today. And the question I always like to ask people who are running for high office, right. um, um, given the amount of uh, scrutiny that comes at the governor's office and that type of thing, why do you want to be governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? I think scrutiny is a good thing. <laughs> Frankly, when I was running for state treasurer, and I am uh, mm -hmm. the state's treasurer for the right. past four years, I said, I'm going to put the state's checkbook online. People said, never going to happen. I said, no, we need to do that. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the taxpayers spend $24 billion a year in taxes, mm -hmm. and they're entitled to know how every dime is being spent. By the way, if any of your uh, viewers want to see it in live and in color, mass.gov slash open checkbook, and they can see how it's all spent. All right. So I think transparency and accountability is important, and I think we have to be expecting scrutiny of every decision we make. If you're spending taxpayers' money wisely, mm -hmm. uh, that's what we're elected to do, and I think citizens have a right to expect that out of every elected officer, whether it's uh, town council, whether it's mm -hmm. school committee, or whether it's governor of Massachusetts. Absolutely. Um, so I know that uh, running for office comes with a lot of challenges. Uh, what would you say is your favorite part of the political race? Eating ice cream at every home <laughs> made ice cream shop in Massachusetts. I think we did 71 ice cream shops when I ran for treasurer. We'll easily outdistance that. But I add into that onion rings and corned beef hash and <laughs> fried dough and all the great things that the you get at a street fair. Exactly, yes, yes. exactly. But seriously, my life and my career has been all about job creation. I ran a fourth generation business, 104 year old family business mm -hmm. over in Somerville called Grossman Marketing for many, many years. Matter of fact, I just bumped into a former colleague, a woman named Kristen Cavoli, who works for a health software company. She worked for us for a while. Yeah. And uh, so it's wonderful to reconnect with old friends and colleagues. But I was a job creator. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. When I became state treasurer, I said, let's bring money back from overseas. Let's put it into local banks. Let's put it into local banks that are going to lend money to small businesses owned by women people of color, immigrants, veterans, all small businesses, because small businesses are the job creators. And so this is going to be a tough election. I hope yeah. to be the nominee of the Democratic Party come Tuesday night, because Charlie Baker will be a tough candidate to defeat. Sure. He'll talk about his job creation. He'll talk about how he knows how to run government. But I think it's fair to say that I have reformed almost every part of state government that I'm responsible for as treasurer. I've kept every promise I made. I was honored to receive the endorsement of the Boston Globe. They said the next governor will make decisions that will affect the economic destiny of Massachusetts. That's a big deal. Yeah. And the best social program ever created was what? 
a job. Yeah. And I'm a jobs creator, and that's really what I'm running on. My record of leadership in creating jobs in the private sector, lifting people up, and making sure that we have universal pre-K for every one of our 24,000, 25,000 uh, three and four year olds who lack it right now. Mm. That's the kind of investment we need to make in full day kindergarten and in full day uh, universal pre-K. Well, I've heard that uh, Massachusetts per capita eats more ice cream than any other state <laughs> in the country, so I'm glad you're keeping your end I up on that. I was told that. I <laughs> actually spoke to the New England Ice Cream Restaurant okay. Association. <laughs> it, was my, it was my most fun gig of all. They had ice cream shops represented all over the place, yeah. and I had and I learned that. So sure. I, I'm fully a subscriber of that belief. Well, I know, uh, you know uh, one of the most important uh, jobs of the governor mm -hmm. beyond uh, uh, working on their own programs, of course, is, is to work with the legislature right. to get that done. Uh, can you maybe uh, share with us a little bit about your experience in working with the legislature and how you intend to work with the legislature if you become governor. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, governors can have great ideas, but unless they are being, uh, they're able to work in a collegial, collaborative way with legislators, uh, they can't get anything done. You could have the best ideas, reform transportation, create jobs, invest in public education, but if you can't get the legislature to buy into that program and to be your partners, I'm a big believer in sharing credit. When mm -hmm. you share credit, great things happen. So I'm proud to have the endorsement of your State Senator uh, Jason Lewis and a lot of other legislators from this area. We've done interesting things over the past four years, created a financial literacy trust fund to bring financial education. I don't believe that any high school student should ever graduate again without some basic financial literacy. Mm. But it's not going to all be paid for by government. It's got to be paid for by the business community and the private sector. So I'm going to challenge the business community to be an investor along with me, to get the legislature involved in that. When we break down silos and work in a collaborative way, that's when you get things done. What people want out of their governor? Common sense solutions that improve the quality of people's lives. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for coming to the Reading Street Fair, well, first of all, today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm grateful for the chance to be here. And, uh, and we will have a wonderful election this Tuesday. Yep. I hope to be the nominee. I hope people will consider voting for me on Tuesday, September 9th, in All the right. Democratic primary for governor. Well, thank you, and, uh, and good luck in the primary on Tuesday. Good luck in the general election in November. Thank if, you if very much. There. And, uh, Thanks for having great me. Hope you, you. hope you have a great rest of the day today. Thank you, Steve. We've been talking it. with uh, Steve Grossman, who is the candidate for governor here in Massachusetts. We are headed now out to Kate, who is talking with uh, members of the Colonial Chorus and find out what's going on with them. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm here with Mary from the Colonial Chorus Players here in Reading. How are you doing today, Mary? Good, thank you. Excellent. Can you tell us a little bit about Colonial Chorus? Yep, Colonial Chorus Players have been around since 19... Since 1961, here in Reading, we're Reading's community theater, and we have a location right up on North Main Street, uh, 1249. We have our own rehearsal space, and we've been there for 55 years doing amazing shows, including the community, ages from 7 to 70. We have education workshops, and we do three shows a year. And what are you doing here today? Today, we're publicizing our upcoming production. We're doing You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. Excellent show. It is an excellent show. Here, take a business. This card. <laughs> it's going to go up from October 16th to October 26th, and it's going to be at the Old Hose House, which is on uh, Main Street and not here in Reading. It's a small cast, an amazing cast, and it's a really small venue, so it's going to be a great interactive show. It's going to be wonderful. So that's what we're publicizing, but we also have some fall workshops that are coming up. It's going to be uh, every Monday starting in October, a different stagecraft education uh, surrounding surrounding theater for uh, about eight sessions and so that's what we're publicizing as well. And how can people find out more information about either those or Colonial Chorus in general? They can go to our new website. <laughs> new. Excellent. It's a new okay. website. Yeah, the uh, address for that new website, it's so new I have to check. It's uh, CCP, uh, wait a minute, okay check again. CCP1961.org is where you can get all the information about our show, Your Good Man Charlie Brown, the workshops for the fall, and summer workshops, which we'll be advertising starting in January. Excellent. Uh, so besides your booth, which is obviously amazing, uh, what's your favorite thing here at the fair today? I have to say the weather. It's beautiful. <laughs> I was at Andover Day yesterday for a different organization. Five o'clock came and the skies opened up. Oh, yeah. And it just is really nice today. It's breezy. Everyone's out having a great time and I just love being part of the community with Colonial Chorus players. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's awesome. It's Excellent. awesome. Well, it was great to talk to you today Thank and uh, you. good luck with all your future shows. Thanks very much.
Well, thank you, Katie, for um, talking with the Colonial Chorus players. I have always loved um, theater and watching theater and participating in theater, so it's just great to check in with Colonial Chorus and see what they're doing. And their plays are always terrific. Oh, I've yeah. seen a number of them over the years, and and uh, even the the one coming up, a Good Man Charlie, your Good Man Charlie Brown's a great play. Yes. And, uh, yes. It'd be a lot of fun, you know. And it, people don't, uh, I think, recognize how much culture there actually is in Reading mm -hmm. for a small town. Um, you know, granted we're next to a big city, but there's, there, there is a lot going on here between uh, orchestras and, and, and theater groups and, and it, the ballet, ballet school, schools yeah. and, 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 and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot going on around town. There's a lot to, to see and a lot to do. And, uh, and for high school students, and we talked about robotics a little bit already, but also uh, one of the favorite parts of, of that is the marching band. Everyone likes the marching the award -winning band. award winning marching the band. The award winning marching band from RMHS and they have a booth here today and uh, Katie uh, took a few minutes to talk with them. So let's go uh, out there now to you, Katie. This is Katie here on Haven Street with the RMHS Color Guard and Band. I'm here with Claire, Claire. Bailey, Sam, and they're here to talk to us about the band. So uh, what do you do for the band? I'm actually the assistant drum major and I also play baritone. And what grade are you in? I'm a junior. Great. I'm a senior and I play snare drum. drum line. And Sam, what do you play? I'm a junior, I'm bass drum and drum line. So what's the best part about being in band this year? Competitions. Yeah? yeah. Competitions are a lot of fun. Okay. Lots Where are you guys competing first? Melrose, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's Melrose. Too. Is that coming up soon? Two yeah. weeks. Two weeks. Okay. The 27th. So what do you guys do to prepare for something like that? <laughs> Practice a lot. <laughs> We were, out, no we, we were out all day Saturday, I mean. Yeah, in the sun. Yeah, it was pretty and hot. The rain. Yesterday. And the rain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There was a lot all of rain yesterday. Uh, what are you guys doing today here at the um, We're fair. selling cushions and asking for donations. And giving out flashlights. Yep, very good. And um, what's the best thing about the fair today besides? The live music. Yes. Okay. I've been in a couple yes. of them, it's been a lot of fun. Okay, yeah. great. Have you guys had anything to eat today? No. Arrow's <laughs> pie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the they are right across the street. There's so, yeah. actually a food truck that sells like um, ice cream sorbet shakes, and they're so good. What, do you I know? Like the Jamaican truck? The Jamaican truck is pretty cool. cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't know the name of it. You guys are making me hungry. Well, I mean, you can probably hit it up now. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. All right, uh, thanks very much, guys. Good luck with your fundraiser and with your competition season. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, well, that is the Reading High School Band booth, and uh, as we know, the band does a terrific job. As you said, the award-winning band. We're Absolutely. all very happy about they're here today. And uh, it's just been a great day here at the uh, Reading Fall Street Fair. For those of you that haven't had a chance to get down, well, you've only got a few minutes left, but we are... Still going to be here for a little while longer, and uh, there's lots of different booths here today. Definitely, including um, the RCTV booth. We are here doing more than just interviewing people, man on the street interviews, political interviews. We also have a booth um, discussing what RCTV does, so we're going to kick it to Katie. So I'm here at the RCTV booth with Kathy and Angela, so can you ladies tell me what RCTV is doing today, because it's a big production, which we've been working on all day. Sure. Um, RCTV, for those of you who don't know, is the local public access station here in Reading. So we like to get out in town when there's big events such as today, the Fall Street Fair, and let the public know what's going on. So RCTV has been sending out camera crews such as yourself <laughs> all over the fair talking to people at their booths. We also have um, a stage going on so people can show up and be interviewed at the stage if they'd like to do that. So we're just trying to get the word out to the public about what's going on in their town. Can you talk about any upcoming events that you guys have going on? We have um, a fundraiser coming up at Fuddruckers. Um, RCTV is a nonprofit organization, so we're going to do whatever we can to help bring in the funds. We have that going on. We got some great classes this fall for kids, for people to sign up. So um, everything that's always going on with us is on the website, rctv.org. Check us out. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the best thing about the fair besides the RCTV coverage? <laughs> For me, it's seeing the people. There's, it's a beautiful day. A lot of people are out walking. We're, you know, meeting new people, giving them information about what RCTV does, telling them about the um, birthday parties, giving them pens. <laughs> so, so it really is. It's just seeing the people. Yeah. Um, I've also had quite a lot to eat today, which has been <laughs> quite magical. So, uh, yeah. There is <laughs> also that. that. <laughs> Yeah, we're all a little puffed, I yeah. think, today. Yeah. It's okay. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. It doesn't count. It's my personal philosophy is that. Um, all right. Thank
thanks very much. Have a great rest of your day. And uh, I think the booth is doing a, a really rousing turnaround with a lot of the uh, local politicians and everything. So yeah, it's really yeah. great seeing everyone come out. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a yeah. great crowd. Yeah. It is a great crowd. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, ladies. Have a great day. Thank you, Katie, for um, checking in with our RCTV booth. And again, there's a lot of stuff going on. You can check it out at the RCTV website, rctv.org. Yeah, and it's great for us to have been here today and talked to all the different people that we've been able to talk to, all the politicians and people involved in putting together the fair and all that, and kind of the architect of what we've done here today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the, the guiding visionary <laughs> is uh, executive director of RCTV, Phil Rushworth. Phil uh, doesn't spend a lot of time in front of the camera. He's normally behind the camera, behind the scenes. For good reason. <laughs> but uh, just tell us a little bit about uh, what's gone on to put this production on today. Uh, this is the biggest production we've done in many years. Um, uh, you know, we have every camera that the studio owns here uh, today at the street fair. We've got a four camera shoot here at the, at the set that you've been interviewing all the politicians and uh, we've got uh, uh, cameras at each of the stages recording all the performances and then roaming uh, reporters doing interviews at all the booths. So, um, you know, tying that all back together here at the set, we've got a production van that we borrowed from our one of our video vendors, Access AV, and they were very nice enough to uh, loan that to us. And we have over 35 volunteers just helping RCTV today mm. um, doing the production. So is you know, looking at all these other organizations doing great things here at the street fair, it was, uh, it was amazing to me that so many people wanted to help us out. And, you know, it really shows that RCTV has grown into a place that, you know, we, that I wanted the studio to be a few years ago, and uh, you know, it's here. It's happened. I can't, I can't believe that this this day is actually finished, and we're wrapping up now. Yeah, we're coming close to the end here. Now, I know we've had some sponsors that have helped us out here today too. Do you want to just yep. mention our sponsors? Well, our our gold sponsor for the day is Access AV for obviously uh, uh, giving us this great production truck. But Brian Snell, the law office Brian Snell, for helping us get electricity. We're actually in the parking lot of uh, of his law office. Um, our other sponsors is are the uh, Lions Club who helped feed all of our crew today. Thank you very much to the Lions Club. Thank you. Uh, which was a big hit, and also yeah. the <laughs> other the other food provider for today for our, our production crew crew is the Reading Butcher Shop. So uh, it's it's been great. I and uh, yeah, the and Moxie. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> uh, the official drink of the of official RCTV. drink of RCTV. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, that's great. I mean, you talked about the number of volunteers that, that uh, it, we have. And I, th I think people don't realize how much uh, volunteer time or how much time it takes, person time it takes, yeah. to put on a production like this. Not only have there been people out shooting out in the field, but people have had to edit that stuff when right. it comes back here. Yes, yeah. I mean, we, we got here this morning at 8 o'clock. We set all this up. We had um, at least three or four people in the production truck working. We had two editors taking the segments that were being shot in the field, edited together, and then all that needed to be ingested to the switcher. So it was bigger than you know than we originally thought. We've had training classes for this event, uh, a few uh, you know production meetings. To, to you know, we flew someone in from Chicago <laughs> to, to co-host and, and anchor here today. So um, you know, yeah, and then just you know coordinating all of the. Um, uh, candidates and, and elected officials who've, who've dropped by here today and town officials who've come by. Um, you know, so we had a schedule and the, after the first two were different, that schedule was gone and we were just been, you guys have been doing fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and Our also pleasure. all of the crew who got sunburned today. Yeah. I told them all to wear suntan. <laughs> <laughs> Your liability. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think also, um, you know, some of the uh, representatives of the Democratic Town Committee and the mm -hmm. Republican Town Committee who yep. have been influential in getting the candidates over here. Yeah, uh, Ben Tafoya from the uh, Democratic Town Committee and, and Carl Weld uh, have, um, you know, from the Republican Town Committee have, have helped um, get people over to us, which is great. I mean, you know, did I ever think that we'd have candidates for governor? Uh, on RCTV, terrific. no. I mean, usually RCTV focuses on the local election, yeah. so this is it's an unusual thing with the, with the um, election coming up on Tuesday. That you know, this is an opportunity for for the candidates to talk to the people of Reading. And Absolutely. it gets a lot of different uh, or bigger exposure here. Yes. And then, you know, yep. uh, they love walking around and talking yep. and shaking hands and all that, too. But also this gives them a different yep. kind of exposure. Now, I have been noticing, though, in the last few minutes that my crew has slowly started to go home <laughs> and because they know that it's cleanup time. Right. Yeah, I've noticed <laughs> that. And, I've you know, we've that, been yeah. here all day setting up, but now it's time to clean up. They, you know, oh, Phil, i got to go. Oh, oh, yep. oh, oh, I have an appointment. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, you know, and we've been giving out these fantastic RCTV pens that work on laptops and, I'm oh, sorry, no, uh, uh, tablets, <laughs> tablets and stuff. 
stuff. Yeah. So if you didn't get an RCTV pen, you guess you'll have to come to RCTV and events. Come to Fuddruckers on Tuesday, <laughs> and we'll have RCTV pens if we have any left. Af- after they vote. Yes, after you vote, <laughs> go eat. Come on down and eat. Well, just quickly, you know, about RCTV itself. You know, the origins of RCTV came uh, really back in the late 90s mm-hmm. uh, with uh, re-signing a contract with Comcast initially. Um, and it really has grown yes. um, from an organization of five or six people to really an organization of several hundred. Yeah, yeah, we, you know, and it's membership based. Um, you know, there's, RCTV only has a staff of four uh, people, and the rest are all volunteers. I mean, the 35 people that helped us here today, um, you know, you know, Angela was at the booth. She works for RCTV. Luke was here doing engineering, and I was here. You know, we're actually in, we're our fourth person we don't have right now. Right. So. Um, it's it's pretty amazing that we were able to pull this off with right. as much volunteer help uh, as as a, you know. You, I mean, you guys don't get paid. Yeah. Sorry, no, no, don't get but paid. But we did feed you. Yeah, so. yes, well, yes. yeah. Well, apparently, and again, thanks to our sponsors. Apparently, the Lions Club fed us. Yes, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the butcher yeah, shop. Well, <laughs> we have um, to give them lots of advertising. Yes, but even a word about the volunteers is that um, several of the volunteers are high school students and yes. teenagers. And I actually did intern at um, RCTV when I was in high school, and you know, just exposing young people to this kind of technology, to um, learning these types of skills and um, serving their community in this mm-hmm. way is just um, unparalleled. And I think that it's really wonderful that RCTV yeah, does that. Yeah, we're pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I'm it's a fan. One, yeah. of the, one of the things to point out is, is you talked about the editing. I mean, the editing was done by high school students. Yes. yes. Yep. Um, and so that's realized. Yeah, we that have, uh, we have uh, a great uh, group of uh, interns right now working, uh, high school interns and volunteers. Um, you know, uh, Mariah and Julia were here editing today, and they all the all the interview segments and the B-roll they chopped all that up here at the fair and and put it into the switcher, yeah. which which uh, Will and and everyone in the truck. Um, see, I didn't want to start naming names because I'm going to forget. People. We're going to forget people. We understand there's a lot, that, but there's, there's a lot, lot, lot of there. people who uh, yeah. who contributed to today's broadcast and today's uh, yep. coverage. Um, RCTV itself is an organization that's really uh, committed to providing a resource to the community for people to be able to express their own ideas and and, and, uh, and get their freedom of speech out there mm-hmm. as, as in, on the television waves, which is I've always referred it to as the modern soapbox. Mm-hmm. People don't go to the common anymore and put a soapbox and start speaking. The way you speak to the people is really through television. Yep. And so RCTV provides that. Anyone can come down and become a member of RCTV? Anyone. Anyone. And, and uh, what does it cost? Uh, s- students and seniors are $15. Uh, regular membership is 20 dollars annually and it allows you to vote in the annual meeting and you can you know vote uh you know have a representative on the board you can help do that or if you just want to you know be behind the camera be on a cam- be on the camera do an interview show whatever you want to do you know you yeah. s- you've, if there's a there's a type of show that you think rctv doesn't have and should have come talk to me and angela will will tell you how, you know we'll help get you done. get it done yeah yeah that's i think that's great and i think a lot of people don't realize that they can actually host yeah. their own show or can produce their own show absolutely if you're one of the organizations that's uh, here at the street fair today and yep. you want to get even more exposure to your organization your rctv is a way to do it yeah absolutely. Uh, come down and make a show and, and speaking of shows it. and since we're here you've <laughs> got like five shows that you do <laughs> <laughs> so over the years <laughs> yeah so you get your, your sports show that you're still doing yes yeah, so the, the big picture is my show and right. then we talk about uh, big picture events and sports we won't talk about today's football game for instance no. but we might talk about uh you know our favorite football game of all time or our favorite sure. quarterback or something like that of all time and uh you know in the past i've done a community conversation and i've done uh candle lights um and well the, the one that that's coming back this fall that i want to put a plug in there is is for uh, time will tell the time game will show. tell the uh, game oh show yes. yeah we're, we're always looking for for contestants for, for contestants that so if you're that. interested in being a contestant on yeah. time will tell contact the studio and uh, you know, I've been involved in election coverage over the years too mm-hmm. and I've always I've always enjoyed that so it's really been uh, you know for me personally RCTV has been a terrific experience I've been with RCTV since it became RCTV I think we'll keep you oh thanks <laughs> <laughs> um, since it became RCTV I've yep. been with RCTV and, and uh, Kevin's a founding board member found, of found RCTV. a founding board member yeah. that's Very right impressive. and uh, and boy did you make a mistake <laughs> <laughs> well I started with television back in high school um, my, my high school had a television uh, studio and I got involved in, in that and when RCTV was getting started again here in, in Reading, I, uh, I said, that sounds like something I want to be involved yeah. in. So, so uh, you know, we've had a great experience today, and uh, it's really been uh, a terrific time here, and, and hope uh, the candidates have appreciated the time that we've given them, and we've certainly appreciated their time today. Absolutely. So uh, for Laura, for Phil, my name is Kevin. Uh, we've had a great time, and uh, we are going to close it down here for now. And uh, thank you all for watching our coverage of the Reading Fall Street Fair, and we'll see everybody next year. Bye, everybody. All right, bye-bye. Bye.